from deep in the heart of Texas, broadcasting worldwide. We've got a very special guest uh, joining us to break down the sleeper cell agenda of the globalists to bring in radical jihadis by the millions. That's coming up. But right now, let's go to Trump live in D.C. We're coming to you from Austin, Texas. But let's take you now live to D.C. with his must be, and I mean must foreign policy speech. Defeat terrorists and promote regional stability, not radical change. We need to be clear-sighted about the groups that will never be anything other than enemies. And believe me, we have groups that no matter what you do, they will be the enemy. We have to be smart enough to recognize who those groups are, who those people are, and not help them. And we must only be generous to those that prove they are indeed our friends. Teleprompter free, folks. You're actually saying it. We desire to live peacefully and in friendship with Russia and China. We have serious differences with these two nations and must regard them with open eyes. But we are not bound to be adversaries. We should seek common ground based on shared interests. Russia, for instance, has also seen the horror of Islamic terrorism. I believe an easing of tensions and improved relations with Russia from a position of strength only is possible, absolutely possible. Common sense says this cycle, this horrible cycle of hostility must end and ideally will end soon. Good for both countries. Some say the Russians won't be reasonable. I intend to find out if we can't make a deal under my administration, a deal that's great, not good, great for America, but also good for Russia, then we will quickly walk from the table. It's as simple as that. We're going to find out. Fixing our relations with China is another important step in really toward creating a even more prosperous period of time. China respects strength. And by letting them take advantage of us economically, which they are doing like never before, we have lost all of their respect. We have a massive I'll say trade this. deficit. He's acting like there's a little bit of teleprompter, but I heard he wasn't going to use one, but then it doesn't sound like it was written. Find a way quick. It sounds like it's regular talking points, so we're going to find out. It doesn't matter. I mean, I don't care about a foreign policy speech. Somebody has their own teleprompter if they wrote their speech. But China. Let's keep going with this. Right now, look at what China is doing in the South China Sea. They're not supposed to be doing it. No respect for this country or this president. We can both benefit or we can both go our separate ways. If need be, that's what's going to have to happen. After I'm elected president, I will also call for a summit with our NATO allies and a separate summit with our Asian allies. In these summits, we will not only discuss a rebalancing of financial commitments, but take a fresh look at how we can adopt new strategies for tackling our common challenges. For instance, we will discuss how we can upgrade NATO's outdated mission and structure grown out of the Cold War to confront our shared challenges, including migration and Islamic terrorism. Yeah, instead, NATO is opening the door to conquer Europe with the Islamic horde. That's the problem. I will not hesitate to deploy military force when there is no alternative. But if America fights, it must only fight to win. That's Ron Paul's quote. That's right. Quick, known missions. I will never send our finest into battle unless necessary, and I mean absolutely necessary, and will only do so if we have a plan for... Well, notice Trump has the same, the does the same hand signs as I do. I don't do those on purpose, I just do it. You ever notice that? It's weird, I get accused of like secret Our signals. Is peace and prosperity, not war and destruction. The best way to achieve those goals is through a disciplined... Isn't it good to see a presidential candidate using their hands? Everybody used to use their hands here. They just have this talking head thing. Donald Trump just uh, finished his first big official foreign policy speech. We carried quite a bit of it. We'll have some of the transcript for you in the next hour and go over it. Uh, when his former campaign head and uh, still one of his top advisors, Roger Stone, joins us, as he does uh, at least once a week, 
coming up in the second, uh, third hour today. We're now in the second hour right now. There is so much unfolding, so much going on. But what you have to understand is our government agencies now are pretty much entirely run by multinational corporations. That's not denied. And so you have to understand, the Central Intelligence Agency got Congress three years ago. You can just type this into Google. You'll get the Washington Post reporting on it to change the law so the CIA could operate domestically in propaganda, including deception of the American people. And then I come out and say, look at the NFL of all these anti-cop halftime shows with Beyonce and her uh, running around with a baseball bat and she's mad at her husband breaking car windshields and burning things down with young women watching approvingly. This is cultural destabilization, 101. So they had hundreds of publications come out and say, I was crazy, the CIA is not involved in domestic media. And then they had Stephen Colbert last night on late night, that he's taken over from David Letterman, come out and say, quote, this is all just in your face making fun of you folks. That he thinks Beyonce should be running the CIA just randomly. Just threw that in there. We're going to play that clip later. This is how stupid they think you are. Now, we're about to go to our guest. I just wanted to preface it with that, that, that we see them telling us, oh, we have a delegate process. Votes have never counted. That's ridiculous. They're trying to sell you on the idea that delegates aren't supposed to represent the votes from their precinct. And they've manufactured these super delegates out of thin air. They're trying to break our will, but it's not working. AP poll, Gallup polls, and others show between 6 and 8% approval for mainstream media, and it's only dropping. 6% last week in the AP poll. It was 8% a few months before that in Gallup. These people are less popular than scurvy on a ship or something. I mean, it, it, it is just amazing. These people are less popular than syphilis. But they sit up there and they just keep shoving lies, like Obama. I never said we wouldn't have boots on the ground in Syria. He said it 16 times. We played the clips. It's a new level of lies, and it's reached the Marie Antoinette level where they just say, let them eat cake. Why would they bring in the last three years five million people into Europe, a million just in the last six months or so, Claim it was a few hundred thousand here and there, and then suddenly, oh, it's been two, three, four, five million. Hundreds of thousands here, cover it up and say it's a few thousand. Every high school in town, including my alma mater, has over 200 refugees from, quote, Syria, and they're really Saudi Arabian and others. This is a Sunni invasion, a, 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 a Wahhabist invasion. On record into Syria, then into Turkey, who opens up a conduit all the way through Europe with Merkel and Hollande and all the rest of them. And the Swedish prime minister saying, come to me, come to me, and kicking old people out of their government housing and moving them. This is all confirmed. We've had our reporters over there in no-go zones in Paris and in Brussels, Belgium, where they would go 10 miles in any direction. And, and Muslims would just run out going, get out of here, screaming at them in, in French or English or, or Arabic. And... Biggs has been in a lot of combat. He heard him in Arabic saying, get out of here, infidel, infidel. He's got infidel on his arm, tattooed. Freaking out on them. And then they go on TV and say, there's no no-go zones in the U.S. or in England. or in this, this is what's going on. Why would the establishment open a conduit up for the last three years, bring them in, let them come in? Judicial Watch got more documents. We went down there and found the mosque on the Texas border. That they've got sleeper cells coming over. We know this is going on. So the question is, why would our governments be doing this at a level where upwards of 80% they admit with the passports are military age men. A lot of them brag on their Facebook and Twitters, hey, German ladies, I'm here. Here I was in combat in the, in the Free Syrian Army you know, a year ago. Why would you do that? It is a giant sleeper cell invasion. And I had the founder of Oath Keeper, Stuart Rhodes, on a few weeks ago. And he said, you need to get Matt Bracken on. He really knows what he's talking about. You should go read his articles. And I did read them, and just they're amazing. In fact, I want to start reposting them on Infowars.com and, 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 of course, linking to his side if he'd be gracious enough for us to do that uh, because it's very, very important. Tet Take Two, Islam's 2016 European Offensive. 
and he's the uh, author of Enemies Foreign and Domestic and a well-known advocate for Second Amendment rights. Uh, the following um, guest essay by Bracken is also being published at Western Rifle Shooters Association. And he's also written another article dealing with uh, burning down the house in 2016. He sees war in the near future before a new president takes office. We're going to look at that coming up as well. But uh, enemiesforeignanddomestic.com, enemiesforeignanddomestic.com, and I'm not going to go over his whole bio. You can go there and see it, but a long career in the Navy SEALs uh, going back into the 1980s, Beirut, you name it, just all over the world, uh, Panama Canal, it goes on and on, what he's seen. So he's actually been there, done that. Um, witnessed how people infiltrate, both from the side of an infiltrator, someone trying to find the infiltrators, and he has really written some detailed breakdowns of what's happening. He's a self-described uh, freedom supporter, a constitutionalist who believes in uh, original intent of the founding fathers of our country. He lives with his family in North Florida. So, Matt, thanks for coming on. Um, reading your essay, just studying history and, and what's happening, I can find no fault. And of course, you bring your military background to it as well. Uh, a lot of folks respect your writing. Uh, you, you've heard what I've said in the last five minutes. W was that overall accurate? And what can you add uh, in an overall overview for folks in the next five minutes before we go to break? Okay, it's it's um, perfect. Your byline of your website and your show, there is a war for our minds, a battle going on for our minds. It doesn't matter if we're like monks in an Irish monastery discussing what's actually happening. If the war for the minds is being lost at the at the at the mass level we make fun of the north koreans you know we we show them doing the wave in stadiums or you know swooning for dear leader but look at swedes they've been brainwashed into actually hating themselves but when they look at the mirror they say this blondness just has to go we're so guilty of everything swedes in america i mean the madness over transgender i just saw a youtube video um on a college campus the guy says what if i want to be if I, if I feel that I'm a six foot five Chinese woman and everybody agrees, if that's what you feel, then we should respect you as a six foot five Chinese woman. So the, you can see how much work we have to do. I mean, the fact that after a century of communism, 100 million to 200 million killed under the social, various socialist banners, you have the young generation supporting this retread Bernie Sanders who honeymooned in Nicaragua and Soviet Union, um, Nicaragua during a revolutionary phase. I think this is an extremely dangerous time. I think that it's that 2016 is like a 1916 or 1787 or, or 1788. Another key turning, another key point events. in the pendulum. So, so a crossroads. A big crossroads. We're going to have the, the big Marxist breakout, especially, for example, if tr let's say Trump wins. There's no kinetic event like an assassination. All of these can happen. Massive riots like Watts, Ferguson, Baltimore constantly. Imagine Cleveland on fire during the convention with armored personnel carriers all the way around the beltway. We see Beyonce and, and MTV priming the pump. and That's, that's got to yes. be a directive from on top. Absolutely. That, that's the, the narrative. So this is the war for the mines. And, and the, in Germany, they actually have a new word. Uh, I think it's Lügenpresse, but it means liar press. So they refer to that, the mainstream media, and I would include almost everything that you can turn on your cable channel is more or less controlled media. They don't get out of certain boundaries. If, you know, if, if anything says uh, anywhere peripherally that this could be a conspiracy theory, they absolutely won't touch it. Oh, there's total Which scripting. There's total scripting. conspiracies to come off. <laughs> exactly, total scripting. So please continue, Matt. Well, I think that the, the biggest danger, we're going to have riots in this country, but in Europe, we're going to have an outbreak of Bezlan, uh, uh, the Paris attacks, Brussels attacks. Something very significant happened during the, the Brussels attacks. And you have to understand that a government, a mass, a big organization has to have a communication structure. It's not like a one brain. It has, you know, many individuals. So you have to put a lot of credence in such things as the uh, security levels. They went from sec their maximum security level four back down to three within like 24 hours or 48 hours. While terrorists were still on the loose because they were absolutely wiped out. Everybody worked the maximum of overtime. They're exhausted. They can't do it. They have to go home and sleep. Europe has no bench. 
I think the German army is like 50,000 troops and they are unionized and they won't work over 40 hours. And during NATO exercises, they just quit halfway because the union rep says, that's it. And we don't cross rivers after dark or whatever. So they have no bench. We're going to have an outbreak in Europe. It'll probably start with maybe a do- uh, eight, 10, a dozen attacks widespread. The terrorists have learned the the uh, utility of the synergistic effects of having attacks in various time, uh, places at the same time. It, we used to think of it as an Al-Qaeda signature, like the East Arab, East um, Africa embassies um, being exploded on the same day. But it's more than that. It's a way to overwhelm the, the security system. And in Europe, that's going to be a big problem. Uh, at the same time that we're going to see these Bezlan type attacks, we're going to see infrastructure attacks, uh, and they'll probably do it on a holiday, like they did the Tet Offensive, knowing most of the security services are taking a well-earned break. Yeah, and, and it's it's not going to be like the Tet, the Tet in Vietnam, folks that remember that, where that was an actual uh, instruction orders had been assigned. We, the CIA completely missed it, or they might as well have missed it. If any messages were coming in from the field, they were disregarded. But they infiltrated 80,000 uh, VC fighters into cities. And then all on the same day, they went and grabbed AK-47s and satchel charges from caches and ran amok. It won't be like that in Europe. I'm not saying there are 80,000 guys with an order and you know to go on uh, Bastille Day. It's not going to be like that. But when there are, say, 10 attacks, like a, on a Bezna, Bezlan or uh, Paris or Brussels level, that continues so that tomorrow there's another one and then there's somebody just you know, running amok with a knife. Rolling this- cascade attacks, uh, cells with no communication, almost no, impossible it, to it identify. Will self-reinforce. It will self-reinforce because the mindset is different. They will self-reinforce. Remember, in that religion, that ideology, a pimp, a drug pusher, he's not sinning. If he's selling this stuff to infidels, good for you, buddy. You know, you... You're really a sharp one. It's a perfect example um, to be evil. That's why they're so into gangsterism, right. raping women, sex with other but men. The, they call themselves, but, you know, these followers of Abraham. It's sick. But the but at the very last moment, you can spend your whole life a drug pusher and a pimp and running a discotheque for infidels. And you can undo that all, pull like a parachute, and straight to your 72 virgins. So Get out of jail free card. Smoke dope, party with infidels. You can't. Do enough good deeds, just like tithing extra or praying extra. It's impossible for that person, that sinner, to do enough good deeds if he lived to be 100 to go to heaven. But he can be the worst person in the world, pusher, pimp, armed robber. He goes straight to the 72 virgins if he kills some infidels. So that's why it will self-reinforce. When you see that the security services are completely overwhelmed, they're exhausted, there are no more. That then another school is, ta- is ca- taken down. How do you react to it? Especially if the guys are on a suicide mission where they want to just kill all the kids like in well, clearly, l- they're not Sir, I want to get into the details because you ran embassy security. I mean, you're one of the top experts on this, obviously. Matt Bracken, EnemiesFarnedDomestic.com is our guest. It's so important. I skipped this break. But, but specifically getting into big picture, talking about our elites, the leftist, I mean, I know they're reckless. I know they hate bitter clingers. I know they want to conquer the West. They see Christian uh, Judaic backgrounds uh, as as not working in their new system. They want a cultureless plastic system. So they bring in the most radical uh, jihadis, uh, tens of thousands of them undoubtedly. So so here's the question. They start attacking. What are our governments thinking? Why are they doing this? Uh, what is the, I mean, I understand the mission of the jihadis. It's Cloward Piven. You were, you've been, you speak about it all the time, more, better than anybody. It's Cloward Piven. This is a, this is the Jacobins in 1788 plotting how to disrupt the grain market in France so that they can engineer food riots to overthrow the aristocracy. Okay, so I mean, with your Navy SEAL, you know, uh, high level background, you're not just a door kicker, but a guy involved in everything. Uh, you know, conferring with my historical analysis and Lord Mox and everybody else. It's not our opinion. It's not that we agree. This is what's going on. How do we fight 21st century Jacobins allied with Islam, which strangely enough, towards the end, they allied with Islam uh, again 200 years ago. So these people never change. So how do we deal with them? Information war. Uh, There is a war on for our minds. And the high ground is 
how do we leverage social media, access to mainstream media, books like the ones that I've written? My books are all about false narrative and getting people to see beyond. My first novel starts with a false flag attack into a stadium where a sniper precipitates a panic stampede, and it's sold in the media and by the government as a right-wing militia kook and a reason why we have to outlaw all semi-automatic weapons. It's my books and my writing. It's about getting people to look beyond the curtain. Well, I want to read your books. I want to get you on a routine basis. I know Stuart Rose, other folks that are in the know really respect you. And, and, uh, so, so, so let's go back briefly then, because I interrupt you. Let's talk about the Jacobins. Lead forward. You're talking about how they would engineer food riots, how they'd bring in societal crisis to get control. They're the proto-communists in the history books. That's what we're dealing with. So, so break that down. And then what the end game is, bringing in millions of jihadis. Well, yeah, that... The Jacobins said their motto was um, out of chaos order. But first they have to create the chaos. So they're not saying that it was just chaos in feudal Europe. They're saying we create chaos and from the, you have to, in other words, demolish a building, then build it back up with the bricks the way that you want them organized. You can't just go into a building and change a little few pipes and windows. You demolish it when it's atomized, the granular level, like Cambodia, uh, you know, uh, Poland in, the, in World War II, at that level, you can do anything. You can macro engineer, the trains can be running, the buses can be running. But you have to get the, pre, the we're in a pre-revolutionary state now, but they're going to pull out all the stops, especially if it looks like Trump is going to win. Certainly before he's inaugurated, we'll see a complete uh, go for broke scenario, both in Europe, which will be this major Muslim offensive. The end result of that will be a grand compromise, which is like half Sharia today. And as we know, that means three quarters Sharia in a generation, and you're in Yemen in two generations. In our country, we're, we're going to see a complete fragmenting of the um, society along racial lines primarily. It's going to be brutal. I call it Rwanda times Yugoslavia uh, uh, times, you know, uh, it's going this to be is the same. takedown of America. I totally this concur, and, 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 and I agree. The communists are activating. They're suddenly all over Austin with red yes. flags. They're smiling. They say the time of blood is here. They're activating their sleeper cells, and I would expect to see communists start carrying out terror attacks, and as you said, false flagging the patriots. Flag. What do police departments do? What does the military do? Because they're going to be caught in the middle of this. Especially when terrorists, in Europe, will see it first, because the, this... Islamic Tet is going to happen in Europe. It's going to be a huge wake up for us. It may lead to a landslide victory for Trump. Imagine something worse than 9-11 uh, in October. How does Hillary explain that? You know, people come in from Benghazi and blow up Rome. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's going to make Trump a sure victor if that happens. And then the, the left will say, this is our chance. We have to go for it. And there'll be street riots like between the uh, the communists and the National Socialists in Berlin, I expect to see shooting at some of these big demonstrations or explosions going off. Um, and in that way, the powers that be can say, uh, we, we need to um, put in a little bit of emergency conditions. Therefore, the uh, protests will have to be in separate safe zones, 10 miles outside the Beltway at a designated FEMA camp or whatever they want to say. But we'll, we're going to see the um, freedom of assembly taken away. The, the, the key word, and that's almost like a code word, when you start hearing emergency, because they'll never say martial law. Those words will never come out of Obama, Jarrett, Michelle, that, that crowd. It'll be emergency. They'll say, during the present emergency, we can't afford uh, to have these mass demonstrations, which always lead to violence and, unfortunately, bombs going off and people shooting. So we have to put that in abeyance. Now, if there's a real takedown, the grid goes down, uh, before November, then there'll be no election. If there's no electricity, there's no election. Then we're automatically into an emergency situation. Um, another way that the communists can engineer this is to start a rumor, doesn't have to have any boots on the ground, just start a rumor, an internet rumor, that you know white racist crackers are planning to snipe at black folks lined up at the polling stations. Just a rumor, it's all it takes. You can even you know put up a fake YouTube if you want. You know, find something from 10 years ago somewhere else, recaption it as this happened yesterday, and it'll sound like, you know, rednecks are dragging blacks behind chains in Mississippi and shooting and threatening to shoot at blacks in polling stations. If that suppresses the black turnout, or even if it doesn't, they'll just say that it did, then they'll say that the election 
would have swung on that vote, which was suppressed by white violence. This is a narrative that will be completely sold by the mainstream media. Well, the just like the, the, the burning black churches thing turned out to be totally right. fake, just like the uh, lacrosse team was fake. That was all beta testing, good. and they're just they'll launching this everywhere. And we'll, we'll be on our own in our own parallel free media as long as we have it. Now, I wrote a short story called What I Saw at the Coup. I should, be, I should have finished a novel a couple of years ago, but I, it's too important that I write these things, the short stuff that's on my, linked on my website. No, I agree. we got to get everything out now. A Last Brave New Babylon, What I Saw at the Coup. The, the Internet, we can't take for granted. This is like right now our Freedom Fighter pipeline. YouTube, uh, InfoWars. Got to use it now, folks. Cause when, use uh, it now. Yeah. If they, they're going to take it away. I heard from from folks that, that were at a at a law enforcement con, uh, on, uh, conclave that there's a lot of buzz about Facebook and how they're going to tune people down. Um, this they're also doing their oh yeah. First they're going to start restricting. It's already begun. Stay there, Matt Bracken. This guy's 100 percent dead on from my research, so he can give us the other angle on it. He's going to come back and break down the different angles of how this can unfold and how we stop it. Hopefully. We're on the march. The Empire. Oh, better on start the praying. Run. I'll tell you right now. If everybody is praying, you're idiots. I can feel it in my gut. I can see it. We are. It's coming. It's here. Matt Bracken's our guest. EnemiesForeignAndDomestic.com. I want to read his books. In fact, I want to carry them. I haven't read them yet, but I'm told they're excellent. Uh, you know, nonfiction, and I guess some of them are fiction, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but what he's saying, I mean, the way he's breaking it down, and notice how much energy he's got, how concerned he is. I bet money when this guy isn't on air, he's not like that. But you start talking about this, there's no way you can't get animated and start just really connecting it to everything because it's scientific. It's a rollout. It's been done in other countries. It's been de beta tested in Europe. Europe's about a year, maybe two ahead of us. And I'm telling you, I'm going to see if he agrees with me. The way to try to back them off is if they think that it's absolutely going to fall flat on its face, and that we know who's in charge of it. People like Soros, the globalist, their operatives inside the different agencies, and the big banks, instead of their puppets, and we let them know we know the plan, and the police and military do, which I know that's happening, and I've been a big critic of the police and, and the military carrying out bad operations, but they're some of the most awake people out there. So that's two separate issues that then... They may back off. The problem is that might actually scare them into doing it anyway. So we're kind of reaching a moment in history where things are collapsing. They've engineered it this way. But once you turn this thing loose, it's a juggernaut. I don't think they can put it back in the bottle. So I'm just telling you right now. Yes, this is how we fund the operation. We fund the operation selling things that we believe in and we use. And we're running the biggest special that we can run possibly on InfoWars Select, high-quality, storable foods. It's my Patriot food, the same stuff, packaged the same time. I can contractually offer bigger discounts on already great deals with uh, it being private labeled InfoWars Select. We're running a special for just a few more days, 30 to 40% off all InfoWars Select storable food. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsSelect.com takes you right to the subpage, and you can buy my Patriot, the exact same food, uh, if you want for a lot more. It's still very, very good, but it's the exact same food. And that's why we normally sell both brands because it's the same stuff. And it's just the way contracts and stuff like this works. They have a bunch of other distributors. So I have to follow all these contracts and rules. And I've just found a way to bring you the lowest price out there. So that's what we've done. Infowarsstore.com. Also, Anthroplex is just a whole bunch of known high-quality herbs that naturally uh, boost your stamina, your energy, your libido. It's, I don't want to say it's the poor man's super male vitality, but that's basically what it is. It's just a powder form. Uh, instead of a liquid cold press form. Uh, quite frankly, in some cases, it's probably stronger than super male or super female. Uh, but it has different effects for different people. Talk with your physician before. It's all recognized as safe, but this stuff's real. So, I mean, you probably notice within a day or two when you get up in the morning. I'm just going to leave it at that. Infowarslife.com. Anthroplex is back. After two months of being sold out, super male is about to sell out. There's plenty of super female. I don't know why. It works just as good as the male on males or females. Also, DNA Force is back in stock. X2 is there. You can get 10% off when you sign up for auto ship. And orders of $50 or more, uh, ladies and gentlemen, are um, free shipping. So I want to thank you all for your support. Uh, quite frankly, uh, now more than ever, it is time to get as aggressive as you can in the media, however you can, warning people about what's happening while personally getting yourself ready. And let's just hope all these collapses and organized revolutions that have been carried out by the globalists in the last few years 
aren't going to come here. But you look at what they've done everywhere else, they're trying it here. The overthrow in Ukraine, the Arab Spring, all this stuff is run by the very same nasty people. I mean, the latest James Bond movie they admitted was advised by MI6. And the Quantum Group is the name of George Soros's fund. And the bad guy who runs Spectre is the head of the Quantum Group. He's the guy that tried to crash the British pound. Even intelligence agencies are telling you who runs Spectre. So understand, Ian Fleming was MI6. This is art imitating life, not the other way around. And I had to say one person is like a top general of this globalist crime syndicate. It's a Soros. But there's others even worse than him. And these are people that have bad will towards the West. And I'm going to shut up now for Matt Bracken because I've been jumping in a lot. He's just laying out so much knowledge. Start wherever you want. Go wherever you want. Former Navy SEAL uh, involved in a lot of clandestine operations uh, all over the world. And you can find out more at enemiesforeignanddomestic.com. Comes highly recommended, and I can tell why now, because I was unaware of this guy. There's so many great patriots out there. I know the patriots know who he is. I just get so busy covering news. And then, Matt, lay out this Tet Offensive, how you think we stop it. You've got the floor, my friend. Uh, I don't think we stop it. I think that the forces are in motion are like deep-sea tsunamis. The earthquakes already happened, and the waves are moving across the ocean. Um, there is going to be a convergence what people tend to do is look at each potential calamity in isolation and say, well, that's survivable. You know, if just a hurricane just hit New Orleans, that's survivable. But if you get, you know, 100 Katrinas that happen at the same time, the system is shocked. It goes into shock. Can't move. It can't save itself. Like somebody being shot once in the foot compared to being shot 20 times at once. Um, we're, we're going to have an overload to the system. Now, the plan might be for this Marxist takedown. There might, I look at it like a pyramid, and you have at the very top some very few, very evil people. And I think that there you could almost, depending on your religious persuasions, you could call them almost like a satanic influence or force. Below that, you have people that are also evil, but they really believe in communist revolution and that we're going to attain it. But we're, obviously, we're not going to attain a communist revolution. We're armed to the teeth in this country. But we will have a massive civil war. But the Civil War won't be a geographic North-South Civil War. It's going to be a society tearing into itself Civil War, kind of in the way of, of uh, Bosnia, you know, where people all speak the same language, um, but they have different factions. In this country, there will be such a strong racial element that it's going to get out of control in a very ugly way. And at the, the problem is that there's no way to recoup the civilization. It's a very precious bubble floating that we're floating in, and we take it for granted. But our modern civilization is much more dangerous to ourselves than previous civilizations because, for example, um, calamities that happened to Europe, Black Death, uh, 30 years of war, Cromwell in Ireland, uh, events that killed a third of a population, say, in a generation. You could still just grow food on your own acre and survive if you weren't our food, we don't grow it anymore. Our food comes from thousands of miles away. We all now are living in the equivalent of a glass bubble on Mars. And we don't see the glass bubble. We just think how pretty outer space is. But electricity has become our oxygen. And we're living under this false glass, artificial glass bubble. It's such a complex system now. It has to run perfectly like a, you know, like a Swiss I think I've, I got to interrupt. I think run. I found my new guru. Man, you or see it exactly like I do because that's how it is. If we have a collapse event, it will take hundreds of years to try to even get back. But the reactors will start melting down within right. a matter of months. I if mean, we oh, have my God. Sorry, go ahead. Just it might be the South. You, it might be like Argentina. You'll have to get to... You know, the north could be a, a, a nuclear wasteland, depending on, I don't really technically, I can't profess uh, any great knowledge about nuclear plant safety. But if the economy uh, locks up, if the grid goes down, something people need to understand. There are three parallel systems, like our nervous system, uh, muscular system, you know, bone structure. We have a financial system, an electrical grid and a computer network system. If any one of those three is attacked really in depth, you know, recurring attacks, then all three collapse and our society collapses. You cannot, you know, if the financial system collapses, 
People can't get money out of the ATM, they loot the stores, game over. If the computer system collapses, the grid runs out of control, you know, uh, pipelines go open haywire all over the, collapse, all, game over. So any of those three collapse, financial, uh, computer, global computer network, it's mostly Cisco hardware running over fiber optical cables, and the electrical grid, which we know that they, that, that Metcalf station attack out in California a year ago, looking at it from as a spec ops officer, that was a proof of concept test. That was a very professional thing. They had gone through an underground, cut optical trunks, did things to, so that the, there would be no uh, rapid response, um, fired at these giant transformers, shut the thing down. That to me was a, a somebody showing somebody else that if we do this 20 times, we take down America. Proof of grid. concept. Proof of concept. And, and increase my budget, because if I have 20 teams, if you budget me for 20 teams, the people I would be looking at would be foreign students. Uh, that's the way that you can cycle um, commandos in, into a country. They can come in, for, for example, for one year of being a student, and they can recon their whole area. They can come in another year as a student in another college, and at the last minute, be organized into a cell, take out these uh, these stations. For example, I just say, look, if, if Iran, just to pick on Iran here, if they're gonna spend billions of dollars on a nuclear program, why wouldn't they spend a few million on a cheap kill grid takedown scenario just using commandos disguised as students? It's what we would do if we were smart and had that mindset. KGB used to plan that kind of thing. But how can we assume that, we, that our grid is not going to be collapsed at some point? especially with these Marxists trying to do the big takedown between the conventions and the inauguration. This is a time of maximum danger. I, I think of it as uh, 1917 in Russia or 1789 in France. And again, they want it to collapse, so they to, take over. But they can't take over. This is the thing. A plan, this is what I say a lot, a plan to ride a tiger is not the same as riding a tiger. Sure, that's why when Mao took over in China, you know, 40, 50 million people died in the first round. But and, and communism still didn't work, but it can wreck a society. And what I'm afraid is we're going to have in this country a wrecked society. Now, we have to hold on to the Bill of Rights no matter what, no matter who's put on the Supreme Court. They can say the moon is made out of green cheese and that, you know, anybody that says they're a giraffe, you have to call them a giraffe. It won't make it reality. They can't take away our First or Second Amendment rights. If they try to, I don't care. If they stack the deck with communists on the Supreme we Court. We have to defend every liberty at point blank range and promote because, it everywhere. Because we may not have this pipe, we may not have this means of communication. We could have our internet taken away. I, I wrote the short story. You can just look at these things on the internet called What I Saw at the Coup, where as the, the backdrop is a missile war in the Middle East that takes down our grid temporarily and our internet for longer. And during that period, troublemakers like us are quietly taken off the stage left because there's no way for anybody to know what's happening to anybody for that month. And then when the internet comes back on, it comes back on in a much more controlled way. And, and how this is gonna go is they've already got the Commissars and the UN Strong Cities Initiative in every major city, quote, advising the police. And so if the police go along with it, then the Justice Department doesn't come in and harass them and take over. And so they're already setting up these contacts during a collapse to have the commissars order the police and, and local security services led by federal leaders to go out and round up the patriots. The police and others just have to not follow those orders at the that's point right. that, plus, you really want that job trying to go and round up the all plan. the veterans? That's the plan to ride the tiger. It's not the same as riding the tiger. In my first novel, the guys that actually shoot into the stadium on opening day of you know that Washington FedEx football field, from a mile away, somebody rainbow arcs in some uh, uh, SKS rounds, causing a panic stampede. Now these are just two ATF, you know, mid-level executives that want to see the ATF's budget increase because it'll increase their power and prestige. They know that they're not going to wind up with America being disarmed. They know it'll lead to a civil war. They know people won't turn in their semi-automatic weapons. But they're happy to start a civil war if they're in charge of, like, one of the factions that's going to be very powerful. Crisis right. is our brand. Right. And, and we're going to see events spin completely out of control, particularly if, as I said, 
the financial system, you know, you look at, at um, Deutsche Bank and situations in Europe that are more dire even than with our Fed and, and our quantitative easing, Europe is in just as much of thin ice financially. Imagine when they, this pet breaks out, nobody will be going to work for months. So what happens to the economy? The metros are closed. Every time a metro runs again, somebody jumps out and blows one up. Sure. No more well, metros. That's sure. how they get to work. And there's also going to be a move to round up all the Muslims in Europe and here because they're sleeper cells. You'll almost have to. But under the cover of that, then they'll have the precedent to round up everybody they want. And you can see that as the kind of right-wing response being sold by former CIA directors and others. That's another yes. program they've got cooking. So both the right-wing and left-wing elements of the power structure want the crisis because they all think they're going to battle each other inside the control grid for who gets control of the crisis yes. when they're unleashing something, as you've said properly, that is uncontrollable and will bring in meltdown worldwide that's probably not survivable. We have to somehow communicate with these different establishment groups and say, listen, your guy upstairs is probably Satan himself. Stop following these orders, I you lunatics. I don't think that it can be turned off. I don't think that if George Soros had a con, you know, conversion on the road to Damascus, if George Soros turned into you know, George Washington tomorrow and he said, stop, everybody, turn around. It, there's too much momentum. It's now like giant boulders coming down the hill. It's... I agree with you, unfortunately. I agree with you. These forces. I agree with you, but... Uh. We need to prepare for a grid-down scenario in the next year because we're not going to have a Russian revolution, a uh, French revolution through Washington, D.C., and the power stays on. I promise you that in this chaos, even if engineers can't get to work because it's too dangerous because there's just people venezuela now doesn't have power basically no refrigeration all these other countries can't do it under communism and command and control you don't get electricity or medicine folks but it's going to probably collapse before they get anywhere near establishing com a communist control i understand yes because they'll have a civil war like the Finns. people forget there was a war called the winter war where little finland actually beat the soviet union that Rolled in thinking. There's a book well, on that, isn't it? Total resistance. Yeah, and they, but they tangled with like a Switzerland. They walked right into a. They sent a bunch of res, unmotivated reservists, conscripts, into a country like Switzerland with a William Tell type of, you know, Marxist. Uh, excuse me, Patriot men, mentality. You know, marksmanship culture. Isn't William it, Tell the archetype of the uh, of, of the rebel against tyranny? The true story of the guy that took yes. out all those people because they hurt his kids. That's right, and that's right. He was he was a uh, 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 you know Charles Bronson, so to speak. Well, there's millions of Charles Bronsons in this country, and I have to tell you, some of the most dangerous Charles Bronsons I know are older than me, and they might have a bad cough or they can't ride their motorcycle anymore. But they they they're thinking, you know, when this happens, I'm I'm not just going to go quietly. I'm going to make it, you know. I, I don't I think all the stuff. leftists that can barely wipe their noses realize that they're about to stick their hand on a badger hole. No, that's right. And and forget about uh, AR-15s. The most common type of rifle is the, just the generic bolt-action deer rifle that can hit and kill a 200-pound mammal at 400 yards. Remington 700. Millions. I shot millions deer at 1,000 yards with a Remington 700. And the, and the most dangerous order of battle will be what I call the militia of one where just one guy doesn't tell anybody, not even his wife maybe. He just goes out, he goes to town with the rifle, he takes one shot, and that's it. I mean, look at the DC sniper situation. They got it totally wrong, they got the acoustics wrong. Stay there, stay there, Matt Bracken, stay there. We're gonna talk about this, this is so important. Wow. We got five minutes here and five minutes the next segment, then Roger Stone, the consummate Trump insider, is gonna give us all the intel on what's coming up, what's developed. Of the big victories last night. The globalists are financing revolution all over the world. They're against the nation state. They play the countries off against each other. You know, that's like a James Bond movie. Well, that's because that's how it really works. And the worst element is the Anglo-American establishment. That's what they call themselves. It's nothing to do with being Anglo, but it's the people that run England and the United States and a few other countries. It's the dominant force because it had the wealthiest, most open free market system to milk. And it is just running around over the world, allied with radical Islam. And we have to get that narrative out of it. It's game over. I want to invite uh, Matt Bracken, who I got to say I'm extremely impressed with. Uh, I read some of his essays, thought they were excellent. 
Uh, but I tell you, uh, I absolutely click with what he's saying. It doesn't mean I agree with him. I totally agree with him, but it's not like I like him because I agree. It's because I know it's accurate, and everything he's saying, the way it pieces together, is exactly basically the way I've been seeing it. A lot of my other sources have been seeing it. And what's scary is it's like there's no doubt now. I mean, you can see this is the big one. Now, I hope and pray there's some way to avert this, push it back, whatever. But my gut is 50 times more concerned than it's ever been. I mean, I almost feel bad even being here on air, not getting, you know, dug in out in the countryside. Uh, but I realize I need to be on air as much as I can. I got a bunch of quick, short questions for you, Matt. You got to come back for like an hour and a half if you can next week or hell, even maybe tomorrow, part two or something, because I want to really flesh this out historically get into your you know, military background and stuff as a guy that led, you know, SEALs, not just, you know, out there uh, heroically doing a lot of this work, but you, clearly from your training, a lot of classified stuff, uh, I can see you've really been behind the curtain. Looking at this, though, just quick questions. The police aren't perfect. They've been militarized by the globalists, but they're more awake than the general public, I found. Clearly, there's a move to cause a civil war aimed at local government, kill the cops, Kind of the army of one thing, but, you know, get every little thug to go shoot a cop in the back of the head. That's what Soros and the globalists have been pushing, clearly. What is their hope there? And shouldn't that then, and I've seen the police actually get it, shouldn't that be what we reach out to the police with? That, hey, we're doing Overwatch. We want to work with you. This is here. You better get operational now to stop this because they need to be the front line with local government uh, to identify globalist operatives locally, you name it. So when all this goes down, they understand which side to be on. And I'm serious. I think that's absolutely key. What do you say? Yeah, there's a there's sort of a war within law enforcement that, you know, Stuart Road, Rhodes and the Oath Keepers are certainly right. We, we can't turn against the police. The police are going to be required to preserve civilization. Um, and they'll be completely, you know, if they can't watch their backs, as Stuart, the way that Stuart puts That's it. That's why the enemy's targeting the police. That's when people get mad at me that hate the cops uh, because the cops have done something bad to them. I get it. But the communists want to take them out. Get that, folks? Get that? Right. This is a Marxist takedown. And that we're in, this, we're in this stage. Lenin called it the worse, the better. When they said, like, you know, there's food riots in Leningrad, he said, the worse, the better. You have to create those 1789... You know, bread riots. He said more Paris blood. He said more blood. Just kill carnage, random fear. And in this, and imagine, in the only they didn't have electricity in 1789. They didn't have electricity in 1917. So the linchpins that you would pull out would be, say, the the food factories that bring the bread to Leningrad. That train doesn't make it for a week, and now there's riots. Well, today you don't do necessarily do bread. You go after the grid. You go after the computer system. You go you go after the financial system. Then the bread stops. So. In, in, in the absence of electricity, the computer network, and the financial system, our societies will implode. They, enemies don't need to fire a missile over a city. A missile comes with a return address. Mutual assured deterrence works. But who will know who hacked our computer grid? Who do we attack if our computer grid is hacked? It, maybe it's anonymous. Maybe it's the Koreans. It can be backtrailed through a third country. It could be an inside job. Obama could open the door to China. And it makes it much more likely to happen. The Cold War, mutual assured destruction worked during all the Cold War because every, each, each you side You know where the missiles were coming side. from. But in, in this situation, if our financial system is hacked, if everybody's accounts just goes gibberish haywire and nobody can tr do a transaction, within a week, the, the grid will be down. The stores Matt Bracken, you're absolutely right. Five more minutes straight ahead, third hour. Tell everybody you know, tune in, folks. This is serious business. Thank you for listening to this is serious business. I'm going to get this guy back on for two hours to take your calls next week if he can do it. He'll be back. Stay with us. So John Kasich, who almost has no delegates. Like I said, if he was in the Daytona Speedway you know, race, he would uh, he'd be like maybe 100 miles at the end of the race into it with uh, Trump at 500, Ted Cruz at 300 or so. And they're just trying to spin the idea that all this is okay and then Trump responded to that as Ted Cruz comes out and they say is set to win Arizona. You know, weeks ago, Trump won by a huge percentage. Doesn't matter. Because the Republican establishment already had the, quote, superdelegates in there. So they bring the delegates together and then they just say, okay, well, we're going to go for Cruz now. And then CNN, MSNBC, they all ask, why do we even have elections then? And they go... That's a good, good, good question. Just permanent rule like China by the inner party. They appoint their successors. And then they even have MSNBC and others acting like I'm a kook. There were 
I don't want to exaggerate. I saw 10 articles in BuzzFeed and Alternet and all the usual media matters, all the usual suspects, basically implying I'm crazy that I don't want them to take it from Trump and that it's normal. And that I want riots or something with Roger Stone. Oh, how dare us say we're going to go be at Cleveland because they're announcing they're going to steal it and then protest that. Can you imagine having our popular vote stolen and we would engage in the First Amendment? Oh, I guess that never existed either, right? Just like millions of people, millions of people the last 20 years. This was going on when I first got on air. People bring me the court filings. They'd show me, Mr. Jones, my mother owned the house. When she died, she gave it to me. I've lived there with my wife 10 years. I'm having these people on. Look, the deed was paid off in 1972. This bank never had a deed. It's homesteaded under the state of Texas. And they came and they took the house. It's a fraud, Mr. Jones. They file fraudulent. They take houses. And I'd have these guys in with their lawyers. And I'd be reading it. I'd show it to my dad. I'd show it to lawyers. And lawyers were like, you don't want to mess with that. Boy, those, those courts are, yeah, when you get into property, you know, I'm going to stay out of that. We'd go down to the county tax assessor and, and, and an interviewer, catch her in the hallway. Nelda Weller Spears was her name. And, she, and we'd go, you're taking old people's houses. She goes, we don't take houses. And I'd cut people having their houses taken. I go, well, you sell them on the courthouse steps. She goes, we don't do that. No, we don't, Mr. Jones. And I go, well, you're allowing banks to take houses they don't even have the deed to. No, we don't. And then running down the hall, here'd come the SWAT team. They'd get up against me, start bumping into me. In fact, that's on video. Mike Hansen ought to dig that stuff out. SWAT team running up, bumping into me. And then I would go up in their office and preach at them a couple times. And then by the end of it, they were apologized. And then, of course, though, they fired to have the SWAT team that brought in somebody else. But who knows, he might be a nice guy. One time I was eating in a cafeteria by myself and the Travis County SWAT team head guy comes over and goes, Alex, how you doing? And started talking to me. I was just like, whatever, man. I don't want your job. That's all I know. Anyways, I don't mean to digress. Uh, let's go to this Donald Trump clip responding to Case Here it is. Why is a guy allowed to run? All he's doing is just he goes from place to place and loses, and he keeps running. Well, why doesn't Marco Rubio do that? Why doesn't Jeb Bush do that? Why didn't all of them do that? After it was their time. Now, if he wants to go and have his name put in nomination in the convention, in the convention, he can do that. He doesn't have to run and take my votes because he's taking my votes. He's not taking Cruz's votes. He's taking my votes. And again, that's uh, Trump doing an impromptu cafe TV interview. I love the fact that I'll just randomly let some lady or guy with an iPhone interview him for two minutes. That, I mean, that's a really positive, positive, positive thing about Trump. Look at this headline. And I've told folks about this as I've read about it. And I've experienced it. I've seen it down there at the Guatemalan border. But Mexico tortures migrant citizens in effort to slow Central American surge. They actually give you six months to a year hard labor and they torture you. <laughs> Mexico says we've got to let everybody in. Hey, I'm all for letting folks in. They just can't get babies paid for for free and stuff. I mean, Mexico doesn't let you do that. China doesn't let you do that. But see, you've got, you've got all these Spanish-speaking TV channels run by the globalists just selling this hoax that we've got to open the border. Leaked memo reveals how the Donald Trump campaign really feels about mainstream media. And the government, we're going to be breaking that down uh, in this hour. Uh, we also have a lot of really, really big reports out there that we're going to be going over, dealing with this so-called biggest WikiLeaks style data dump ever. When I first saw this yesterday, I said, it's going to be low-level groups trying to protect their money. It's going to be the Russian networks. Uh, as soon as I saw that they were going after that soccer, uh, that international football group, this is the big mega banks that control trillions, that create trillions in derivatives that, that engage in all forms of drug dealing, money laundering, child kidnapping, uh, white slavery, overthrow governments, $5 billion to overthrow Ukraine, $5 billion to the rebels uh, in Syria. This is the most corrupt group you can imagine, simply leaking this to the Germans, handing it out to 100 different newspapers or more in the last year to, quote, vet it. No, that was to make sure that it didn't connect to any Western operations and to cherry pick what to go after. 
And sure enough, it's in the news today. They're saying this is a selective leak by the West against other networks they don't control. This is how it works. You get Arthur Anderson previously, or now it's another big accounting firm that the former attorney general runs. Then you can have offshore accounts. Then you cannot pay taxes. They certify it, and the government doesn't touch it because it's full of vice presidents, former presidents on their boards, former attorney generals, former FBI directors. There's only two or three of these firms in D.C., like Arthur Anderson, and then you're left alone. Now, the law says you can have an offshore bank account. The law says you can go to the Cayman Islands or Switzerland or Luxembourg. But when they want to, they will come and shake you down and arrest you. This is a model of global government where you have uh, the FBI going out and arresting the leadership of the, of the International Football uh, League, of the International Soccer League. This is global governance. And I'm going to go over that later in the hour with our guest and get his view on it because he's an expert on people going offshore and more. Uh, but WikiLeaks reveals IMF plan to cause a credit event in Greece and destabilize Europe. Don't forget that. The French elite, where it went wrong. Financial Times admitting they don't pay taxes themselves. French billionaire to salt to face trial for tax fraud. Chinese newspaper editor resigns over media control. Associated Press willfully cooperated with the Nazis to show how they're controlled. Top German journalist admits mainstream media is completely fake. We quote all live for the CIA in Germany. It's a whole bunch of their biggest reporters coming out. Why is that important? Because when it comes out of Germany particularly, people see Germany as like, oh, modern, liberal, you can really trust it. It's the worst garbage you'll ever find. Some of their news is accurate if you research it, but, but general scandal news is really coming out of the CIA, out of the MI6, out of uh, Israel, out of other groups, but they fence it through Germany because somehow they have credibility. They never got over being occupied. Uh, high earners say goodbye to France. So again, they want this international tax grab. Tax traders widen division in belt tightening France. And now they're trying to blame Russia for $2 billion in the quote, biggest scandal ever with this Panama data dump, the Panama Papers. Two billion? I mean, that is nothing. You know how many trillions exchange hands in the currency markets every day? The rigged stock markets, the rigged credit default swaps, the rigged uh, currency, the, the, the rigged interest rates, the, all of it. It's, it's in, they admit it's all rigged is what's crazy. Just like they've tried to steal elections, they've manipulated them before, but never come right out and said, we're going to put Paul Ryan in. This is Carl Rove last week. Even if he doesn't have one delegate, and Kasich is showing his wares, saying, you know, it doesn't matter if he's only got a few, he, he deserves to win. I don't know what you call this coming out in the open. Is this really the fall of America, the fall of the West? Or is this a psyop to prepare us for just anything? Because when things get this crazy in history, you go over the edge of a cliff. Are we going over the edge of the cliff right now? Have we reached the event horizon? We're going to talk geopolitics. We're going to talk Syria. We're going to talk Iran. We're going to talk uh, Ukraine. We're going to talk Obama. We're going to talk Black Lives Matter and the destabilization program. Uh, we're going to talk the entire waterfront, 2016 and beyond. But first off, I don't know his view. I follow his articles, but he's pretty libertarian, conservative, uh, apolitical, though. He just does analysis of the world. Best-selling nonfiction author, best-selling fiction author. James Leslie Rawls is American novelist and blogger who is best known for his recently completed Patriots novel series. Rawls, a former U.S. Army intelligence officer. He is the founder of the senior editor of survivalblog.com, which is one of the top sites in the world with tens of millions of visitors a month. For the past 10 years, he's covered survival and preparedness topics from a constitutional Christian libertarian perspective. His latest novel is titled Land of Promise. He's got another one coming out, too. The first book in the Counter Caliphate Chronicle series. This novel, set two decades in the future, describes the establishment of a Christian nation under siege. Now, I could do three hours with this guy because I got a lot to say, a lot of angles to cover. He's only on to the bottom of the next hour, but I want to invite him back in a few weeks for a part two for two full hours because he, he was willing to do it today. And he's a busy guy. Because I've got my reporters popping in for the last 30 minutes of the next hour. I may push them, though, up to David Knight, though. We'll see how this goes. But I just threw out that menu of what I want to cover. But front and center is, what is this caliphate plan? Why would the West be bold enough to bring in 5 million people they know, many of which are middle military-age men and are jihadis? 
Will they carry out attacks and then martial law comes in like areas of Europe have already done? And how will our political elite get away with bringing them in and then having them attack us? Is that part of this victory over logic and common sense? Just like, in effect, they're suspending the election by stealing Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump's delegates openly. I mean, we're really entering a new phase. Is this bravada? Is this arrogance? Is this megalomania? Or is this a desperate attempt to look confident? I've thrown out a lot there. Uh, James Wesley Rawls, survivalblog.com. Uh, we're going to break here in about 15 minutes. You've got the floor. Tell us where you want to start first and what you think is currently happening. Well, Alex, I think um, looking at it from a 30,000 foot view, what we have in the global geopolitical realm is with the end of the Cold War, the powers that be needed to ha have a continued destabilization as an excuse for carrying on with all of their banking shenanigans, their massive military buildups and so forth. They, in effect, through Osama bin Laden and other Islamic leaders that they supported, uh, the CIA itself created ISIS, as you've pointed out many times. They want destabilization. They are hoping that they can walk the tightrope of destabilization to the point where they can continue to consolidate power with a massively centralized government, with a uh, electronic currency replacing physical currency, and with the whole statist agenda by building up the Islamic threat and then uh, hoping to uh, encounter that threat, all the time accumulating more power and wealth for themselves. But what I'm afraid is going to happen is that they are going to over destabilize and they will uh, in, a, in effect create their own downfall and perhaps the downfall of all the Western nations in the process. They're hoping that they can kind of walk that tightrope and, uh, and carry on year after year after year. But I'm afraid it's going to come back and blow up in their face because a lot of these terrorist groups that they're, they have created don't have any compunctions at all against using uh, true, true weapons of mass destruction so that um, Wall Street itself may be the next ground zero. And their best laid plans of these uh, totalitarian wannabes is going to come back and, and haunt them. Well, you just crystallized it perfectly. I want you to continue, but I just want to back up, sir, what you were just saying. Obviously, I know you're retired, but you talked to a lot of your sources in government. I have amazing sources, high level in government, but also out. And people say, well, I mean, how do you do that? They're going after whistleblowers. Things are so bad now that mainly the U.S. Army, uh, strangely enough, that's just uh, historical, one of the oldest institutions in this country, has been the main group inside the Pentagon saying no to Syria, no to all these events, no to double-crossing uh, Egypt. And they are basically telling the neocons, the left, and the socialists, you better stop it. And there's such a socialist vein in this godless, atheist, New World Order culture that really the only ideology they have is destroy the better clangers, destroy the farms, collectivize everything under corporate control. Uh, you know, a type of high-tech fascist great leap forward, uh, not communist, but fascist more like, mm -hmm. and that they're blowing the engine that made the globalist have a major command base and that the military, not even because the top brass and statisticians are angels, but because they want to keep playing golf and don't want their grandkids killed, they're saying stop it right now. You're about to bring civilization down by crisis creation because you keep getting more power out of crises, but at a certain point, this black hole is going to swallow you. Now, that message you just kind of threw out is the message I've been getting for about six years from high-level Pentagon people and others that obviously use this show as a conduit to warn people. But now, even down to low-level enlisted officers, they know the military basically has been warned. About 90% of the Army's on board. About 60% of the Marines are on board. About 60% of the Navy knows what's going on. For whatever reason, the Navy's not doing too good waking up. That's just kind of a dead reckoning number. 
But this is really a big deal where you almost have a Mexican standoff between institutions in our government, newer, more corrupt private contractor institutions and delusional people like Hillary and Samantha Powers and Obama who have no idea what they're doing and watch Sports Center all day. At least Hitler was in a bunker when he was endangering his whole country and doing super dangerous stuff and knew he could lose and had been in the military. These people are completely out of their minds, and it really is frightening to see them not knowing what they're doing. And, and is that what you're basically coming down to? Yes, I agree with you, Alex, that um, there is a, a, a level of self-delusion that now exists amongst the powers that be that's unprecedented. And the, their level of control over the economy, over the stock markets, manipulating the derivatives market, manipulating the precious metals market, which is a very thin market, the level of control they have is frightening. And again, it's likely to come back and blow up in their faces. And uh, it's the law of unintended consequences. So I, um, for many years, you've talked about the Hegelian dialectic. And it's been employed uh, heavily for the last seven years under the Obama administration. And uh, my fear is that regardless of who comes in uh, in the next administration, we're probably going to see a statist of some sort who's going to want to continue playing the same game, playing this, uh, the same uh, political games, uh, playing uh, pressure groups off of one another, trying to increase divisiveness within our own country by bringing in uh, almost uncontrolled uh, immigration of uh, Islamists who are not going to be properly vetted at all. And in fact, uh, right now, there seems to be a preference within the, the U.S. State Department to bring in Islamists rather than persecuted Christians. So what does that tell us? It tells us that they want a lack of stability. They want to uh, put people at, at odds with one another to create friction. And out of that friction, they're, you know, it's the Hegelian dialectic again. They create the crisis, and out of that crisis comes their solution, which is all stage managed to fill their coffers and build political power. And then under their Agenda 21 depopulation program, they codify the cosmology of us being poor and them being rich as their guardians uh, getting rid of the scourge of humanity, all perfectly scripted, where they play savior of the earth while they literally block industrialization, block systems that would set up a two-child two family with all the actuaries we know that lead towards stabilization, global prosperity, and a new renaissance, and they themselves, going back even to Bertrand Russell and the nonfiction books of H.G. Wells and Galton and all the rest of them, admit a hundred years ago that they were going to have to block a new renaissance and, quote, kill a lot of beautiful and gallant, gallant people, to quote H.G. Wells, to get their new world order. And they even mm -hmm. wrote the book and had the movie Things to Come. The movie came out in the early 30s where they set up a world government run by a UN that flies around in giant B-2 style bombers, actually shows B-2 bombers, right. nerve gassing yeah. nation states and taking the guns from the people and depopulating the planet. I mean, these right. people are completely out of their minds, but the thing is they've got control because the British Empire got behind them and funded th this wild dream. And Mr. Rawls, looks like they're pretty much getting there. Do you think they'll succeed? <laughs> it seems like it. Uh, you mentioned H.G. Uh, Wells and things to come. He was a socialist, but he was, was very prescient about what might happen. And you'll notice that in the, in the storyline of things to come, the, the way that they were able to create their global governance was out of the, the aftermath of a global socioeconomic collapse uh, following war after war after war. It looks a lot like what we're seeing right now. And that's why his boss, as you know, anybody can look this up, the letters, the writings are public. Uh, the man that basically took the British Empire and folded it into the U.S. Empire, Cecil Rhodes and the Rhodes Scholars, envision mm -hmm. the whole plan we're currently living under. 
Yeah, uh, it, and if <laughs> the, the uh, ironically, the the legacy of Cecil Rhodes was is now being protested uh, in South Africa. Uh, they, they don't want anything to do with with any of the um, colonialist um, um, any, any of that history. They want they're te- they're literally tearing down statues in um, in, as, in South Africa at the universities right now. Cecil Rhodes really had had a view not just for the African continent not just as they said in those days cape to cairo but for the whole world and his a lot of his proteges ended up creating organizations like the cfr and the trilateral commission and so forth years later it's all been an an almost uninterrupted chain of this quest for global dominance global control and they've, they've very wisely co-opted the educational system, the, the mass media, and the banking system. And let's be clear, go further. Again, the, the, you're getting the inside scoop here, listeners. Cecil Rhodes, all the rest of it, they even said, and he wrote, you can read it, 100 years ago, we will then even finally get rid of the trappings of the empire, the flags, the statues, the parades, the uniforms, and it'll be invisible through our corporate interlocking directorates like the Royal Institute of International Affairs, the Council on Foreign Relations, and it'll be multinational. And now that's why at, at Oxford and places, they're supporting, you know, pulling down bust of the queen. And, and, and that's why Obama sent back the bust of Churchill is because they're going to even let the socialists and leftists pull that down and believe they've defeated it when they've actually are helping it bring in the next phase, the end of free speech. I mean, these folks are so sophisticated. It is indeed. And uh, it's, uh, it's, a, a, um, it's worth mentioning that 20 years ago, the socialists in England turned their own flag, the Union Jack, into a supposed symbol of racism and colonialism, and they declared that the Union Jack couldn't be used in political rallies and protests. That's right. In fact, the police tried to arrest you. Right. That was 20 years ago. And at the time, I, I was in shock and disbelief that that could happen. But right now in America, we're on the verge of that happening with our own American flag. Exactly. They start with the rebel battle flag. It nothing to do with slavery, but ignorant people are told so. So what if some toothless races drive around with it? It's not what it symbolizes. And then now they want the American flag. And, and to expand on that, it's that was only one symbol of empire. The globalists have conquered. The Rothschilds and others have conquered England. They're using that model and the people they use to enforce it upon the world. It's moved on from England. It's still based there to a certain extent. But now they're demonizing anything Western when it's England that ended slavery worldwide. It's England that brought forward the abolitionist movement. And now in the ultimate victory, while slavery goes on in more than 10 Muslim nations today, and women are slaves in hundreds of nations, it's okay because the greatest evil on earth is England, where we got Magna Carta and the beginning of the Renaissance. <laughs> You're so right, Alex. Uh, it, it's... It's just almost a sweet irony to see that the the symbols of what really stand for freedom are being stood on their head, and the institutions that really stand for individual liberty are being denigrated, while everything that uh, represents statism, control, collectivism, socialism, are being lifted up by people like the Obama administration, uh, by uh, all the socialists of Europe and so forth. Right now, we are living in what I refer to as the age of deception and betrayal, where our basic institutions are um, that anything that stands for freedom is being cast in a bad light. We are living and in the true fall of the West and all the wealth and the cultural wealth being flushed down the toilet. When we come back, sir, I want to talk about what that looks like, what comes on the other side, 
if we don't beat it and where you think we are in the fight against it. Uh, amazing guest, James Wesley Rawls. We need to get him on more and more. He's such a busy guy. He usually can only come on for an hour, and that's rarely. He offered two hours today. I may just push the, uh, the, the reporters, even though I love them and want them on, uh, into the fourth hour. Check with Knight, see if that's good with him in the first 30 minutes, because I want to really walk through all this and look at the different sectors of the globe and the master plan, because knowing this plan, and this is a plan. I mean, this is public, folks. Knowing the plan is our chance to beat it. You understand how important this is? We're I never imagined 21 years ago, going on air, local access and local radio, I'd be here with tens of millions of people every week conservatively. It's way more than that. It's ridiculous. Tuning in all over the world. But the good news is, the facts we're covering are what the real insiders, good and bad, know is going on. The elite have been so arrogant for decades, they've admitted so much of their plan so their own people could understand it. Thinking you'd never go look it up. Well, we've been making preparations to resist, to slow this down. It's over 15 years behind, most experts agree. But now they're accelerating. We're going to talk to Mr. Rawls about where this system of betrayal is going. The caliphate they're setting up. Clearly the elite are allied with radical Islam, turning it loose to take over the rest of Islam and to bring it into our countries. That, that's happening. That's one area I underestimated. It's so bold, it's so over the top that, that I would hear people like Rawls saying this 10 years ago and I thought, yeah, I could see that down the road, but you know, not in 10, 20 years. Well, it's, it's happening quicker. So I gotta say that we're gonna really be focusing on this a lot, obviously. Uh, before I go any further, the soils, as you know, are depleted in most areas. So a lot of the food you eat, a lot of the vegetables you eat just don't have the trace elements, all the different vitamins and minerals you need. We've developed with our research, InfoWarsLife.com, an amazingly concentrated, strong system with all the minerals, all the vitamins, the amino acids, you name it, in the newest product, Vitamin Mineral Fusion Advanced Multivitamin Formulation at InfoWarsLife.com. And this is just a super product. It's so good for yourself, for your children, uh, for your husband, your wife. It's such a great gift to give old people. Most of them have absorption problems because of all the you know, how dead their gut is, get your grandparents, get your parents on a good probiotic, get them on something like vitamin mineral fusion, and watch what happens. The amount of energy I get from this is incredible, and it doesn't have any stimulants in it. It's just that it is from plant-derived, highest quality sources, and there's only a few things in here that are laboratory produced, and those are of the highest quality and of the highest standards, absolutely pure. It's an amazing product. Two plus years, I could have gone and gotten hundreds of products, private labeled, had them super cheap, rolled them out. Yeah, they'd be pretty good, but I wanted to be able to say, this is the best we could come up with. It's a game changer. Uh, this is so good, we're gonna probably end up putting this in stores, you name it, uh, because I mean, this is just over the top, over the top. We use one of the biggest producers of you know organic, high quality, uh, natural uh, supplements out there to produce this. We're gonna be talking about that in the future. Infowarslife.com. And I have a glass uh, at lunch every day. My children, I get them to drink it uh, in the morning before they go to school. And they absolutely love it. It's fruit punch flavor. You can sign up um, for auto ship. Cancel any time. Get 10% off this order and everything else you order. Orders above $50 get free shipping as well. At InfoWarsStore.com, that's the blanket store. And then the subsection for the nutraceuticals, InfoWarsLife.com. Mm. And I also promote the Longevity line because their products are excellent. You can find all those products and your purchase there helps fund our operation at InfoWarsHealth.com or InfoWarsTeam.com. But find Vitamin Mineral Fusion. Anthroplex, by the way, is about to sell out. Survival Shield Nation Iodine X2, Super Melon, Super Female Vitality, and more. And look, all we do is go out and go to the most known for thousands of years, herbs, for male vitality, female vitality, concentrate them in a proprietary process and sell that. Or our lung cleanse is dozens and dozens and dozens of the best herbs concentrated down to oil base so that it really does help your throat when it's sore or hurting. Other stuff will have like two or three ingredients and some alcohol. This is oil, folks. The only problem is the sprayer gets clogged quite a bit. You got to put it under hot water and wash it out a lot because it's, it's just, it's just a, such an incredible essential oil. Check out all the products, InfoWarsLife.com, InfoWarsStore.com. And things are getting so serious that I myself am redoubling my efforts to have medical, basic medical equipment, firearms, ammunition, going out shooting, 
uh, an area in the country that's safer to get to. I hope it doesn't get to that, but the depression's here. It's going to get worse. Society's already unraveling. The police state isn't going to save us. We're going to talk about preparedness with Mr. Rawls as well uh, coming up. Survivalblog.com, uh, again, formerly with Army Intelligence. And, of course, nobody in the Army ever brags about the stuff they did. But I, I ran into a colonel and then to another lieutenant colonel that we talked to. And then I ran into another gentleman who I'd met before but looked up. He's in civilian life now and developing stuff uh, for different agencies. And he told me his name and gave me his card. I forget it's at home, but but uh, I was out at the courthouse taking care of something. And he was saying, oh, yeah, you know, uh, Rawls used to work for me. He's a great guy. So I've had three different people who tune into the show. Uh, you know, just talking about the great stuff Mr. Rawls has done for America, which which we'll never hear about. Uh, you know, the quiet professionals. But he just really knows what he's talking about. And we love having him on. I want to get into the Caliphate, your latest novel, which is a smart way to educate people, obviously. They seem to listen to stuff that's fiction, even though it's real. Versus stuff that's real, they seem to ignore it. Uh, but we'll talk about that as well. Uh, but survival, the economy, where you think Obama's going, the rest of it. But as we went to break, Mr. Rawls, you brought up the situation with the age of deception, the age of betrayal. Is this the beginning of the fall? Why are they so naked now? What do you think of Donald Trump? Uh, why are they so scared of him? Because quite frankly, I didn't trust him a year ago. Because he's involved in casinos and things. And I'm not into really being super flashy. It kind of turns me off. But but at the same time, he, he was against NAFTA and GATT 20 years ago. He is a nationalist. I know people that know him before our, he ever ran for office that said, oh, you didn't know Donald Trump's anti-New World Order? And so all this clicked for me about six, seven months ago that they're scared of him for some reason uh, this couldn't be a, a foil. This couldn't be a double cross, could it? But I want your real view on that as well. But let's get into the age of betrayal, the age of uh, deception, where you think the world is right now, and then into this election and, and into the caliphate. Well, Alex, I think that uh, Donald Trump, I think, is popular because he represents, at least, an outsider to the political system. And people are definitely fed up with insider after insider after insider being offered up as as candidates. And while I don't think Donald Trump is a, a perfect candidate, I think that he at least resonates with a lot of people as representing old school American nationalism, national uh, sovereignty, and as a counterbalance to the forces of, of international banking. Now, unfortunately, he he has some compromises in his in his background that make him kind of suspect because of the, actually connections to the Clintons of all people and uh, his many business connections with the bankers. So I find it really difficult to believe that he's a true outsider. But he certainly represents more of an outsider than, sure. uh, than, than certainly than Hillary or, 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 uh, or Sanders, for example. Let me ask you this then. The all-hands-on-deck scenario, and I agree with what you just said, the all-hands-deck scenario from the communist Chinese government to the Mexican government, the former president, the British government, to the pope, to you name it, coming, every magazine, every newspaper coming out against him, I see right. real hysteria and real hate and real concern and the big billionaires getting together and giving hundreds of millions to beat him. I, I see that as them legitimately hitting the panic button because they see the nationalism he's saying, even if he's not really a good guy, is irrevocable damage to them. But it also shows how arrogant they are to think we can have all these foreign governments lecture us how deep into globalist <laughs> colonialism yeah. we really are. I, I, yeah, the... Uh the amount of vitriol that's being directed against him is evidence that the powers that be are feeling very nervous, very anxious, that they're losing control of the political process. Because for years and years, we've had political party A versus political party B. And lo and behold, the candidates for both of those parties have been insiders. They've all been CFR or trilateral uh, commission uh, related individuals. Every time we've, we've been given a, a so-called choice on the ballot that really isn't a choice. It's either political insider 
A or political insider B. And for them to see Trump on the horizon is truly, truly frightening to them to see anything outside of their stage managed operation. So we're seeing a de facto yeah. response to populism, whether he be real or not. It's kind of like, uh, you know, putting up a fake owl to scare away crows. They just see an owl and are upset. They don't know if it's real or not. They're trying to figure out if it's real, but it scares them. Yes, that's that's essentially it. The, the, the folks that want to control the, the whole the whole game, really, they want to control us economically, politically, in every every sphere, basically, uh, look at people like Donald Trump as wild cards. And because they're out, he's outside of their control, he's and he is unpredictable. It really throws a monkey wrench into their plans. Do you think he realizes how much danger he's in? Probably not. Uh, anyone who goes up against Hillary Clinton ought to be really, really worried. Uh, Damn right. His chances of making it at at body temperature to the ele to the election, I would say, are actually fairly small. Mm -hmm. I, I would not be surprised to see that he mysteriously dies of an aneurysm or a heart attack or 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 you know <laughs> something, anything. But uh, his the, the chances of him making to the election, I think, are small. If if he truly is the threat that they think he is. Have you ever in your decades of being politically involved, 30 years or so since you got out of the Army, have you ever, Mr. Rawls, James Wesley Rawls, survivalblog.com, joining us, one of the top most respected survivalists and global uh, security experts out there, I mean, not just with the general public, but with the Pentagon, you name it, everybody really respects him than I know. Have you ever seen a more dangerous time, not just for America, but the world? I mean, this is just, for me, looking at this, this is unprecedented. The amount of dominoes lined up, the amount of triggers being thrown, uh, the elite scurrying around building armored redoubts. I mean, government all over the world is acting like something big is coming. It's truly unprecedented because if you look at the mountain of debt and the scale of the derivatives that have built up, that's one huge threat. And meanwhile, geopolitically, we see a regional war in Syria that could very well blow up into World War III. And we see tension in the South, in the South China Sea, which could very well blow up into another world war. We are truly in uncharted waters here. We have a, a situation that where the, the global economy is teetering on the brink. We have the central banks are right now in the process of going to sub-zero interest rates, which is an absolute panic move. They have basically run out of ammunition in the economic That's war. like injecting adrenaline directly into the heart. Yeah, I, I think that uh, at, this, at this point, we are teetering on the brink of either economic collapse or global war as, as kind of the final option for the insiders to have their way. Because without either of those, we're just simply going to see the truth come out. What's happened with the Panama Papers, I think, is just one little glimpse of uh, the extent of the uh, international financial web that exists. Well, from what I've seen, and it looks like it's a Western attempt to just go after Putin, and certainly Putin's involved in a bunch of this stuff, but it seems selective to some mid-level networks. It's uh, highly selective, yes. And if you'll notice, they're mainly pointing the, pointing the finger at uh, African dictators, for example, yeah. with these, uh, these trust arrangements with, you know, bearer, or one, bearer number, number one or bearer number two, for example, um, as the beneficiaries. The, the serious money, the big money, is being traded in the hot markets every day. It's not these, these tiny little, you know, I, I say relatively tiny, these billion-dollar trusts that are being set up by the, um, in, to benefit the, the children of, of Middle Eastern and African dictators are small change compared to the trillions of dollars that are, that are flowing internationally the manipulation that's going on in the currency markets, 
the uh, you mentioned earlier credit default swaps people have no idea about the 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 scope of the derivatives trading that goes on a cds a credit default swap is a form of derivative and that is so well refined as a derivative that a movement as small as one tenth of one percent of an interest rate can put a major shock wave through the system. And unfortunately, the way this derivatives casino has built up, it's so finely tuned that when a big swing does happen, where interest rates move a whole sure. percentage point or two percentage points, it's going to absolutely collapse the system. Well, James, I want to talk triggers with you. I want to get into caliphate. And I just want to go ahead and I'm going to have you through the whole next hour. We're going to have reporters on in the fourth hour with David Knight. He has another guest popping in as well. But looking at this, here's a Telegraph article. China jitters could trigger global market bloodbath, IMF warns. I love how the very progenitors of this whole scam warn us. And, and, and you know the former head of the Fed that helped give us the derivatives with Clinton, uh, Greenspan, warns us of, of irrational Exuberance is like selling a kid a bag full of crack and giving them a pipe and saying, look out, this might be addicting, but uh, it's <laughs> just amazing. But but uh, getting back to things I see as problems that nobody talks about, and I'm not bragging when I say one thing that launched our show, unbeknownst to me, like 19 years ago, is I put out some police state films showing the military training for gun confiscation and things domestically. Mm -hmm. and, then the, and then the Army and Marines said, don't watch Alex Jones videos and don't go to his website. Well, that meant I suddenly had this huge audience of the military tune in. What was the establishment thinking? Because my audience probably be quadrupled overnight when they started doing that. That actually launched us was them saying, don't go here. So they seem like they're smart, but they also seem like they're dumb. Now, I was totally unpolished. Them still aren't, but, but knew more than the average person. So the show got very popular. I became a source because then all these people started giving me stuff because nobody else would, would talk about it. Here we are 20 years later. And the military listens to the show. Foreign governments listen to it. They listen to others like it. But it shows how bad the rest of the media is, is that we're some of the you know best that's out there. I'm not bragging. But to know that most of the military is aware of what's going on, says they're not going to go along with the globalist takeover, that's got to really cause a problem. And I'm not saying I'm behind this. I'm one small part of it. But I'm a gauge because I interface with these people on the street, you name it. So I know how awake they are. Does the establishment realize that they still currently say don't go to Infowars.com and don't go to your site and a bunch of others, as you know, don't they understand that's backfiring with the Streisand effect squared? We'll be back with James Wesley Rawls, survivalblog.com. I'm Alex Jones with The Answer. Okay, we're going to get back to that point that, that Mr. Rawls got cut off on as we went to break, where I was asking the question about the military, uh, and I'm not branding them as the heroes or anything. But these are people that have actually been in the real world on average. They know about the corruption. They know about the system. And that's always been the problem of dictators or oligarchies is the security service is turning against them. You know, look at Operation Valkyrie and Hitler. The problem is this is an oligarchy. It's a whole bunch of people. It's not one guy. So we're going to talk about that briefly, start the next hour. But here's an example. I get up Saturday. I see a headline. Muslim woman run over by right-wing nationalist in uh, Molenbeek. And I read the article from the Daily Mail, and it never says who they are or they've been caught. I go, that doesn't sound right. That sounds like a false flag because the radical Muslims are experts at this. She runs out, and it looks staged and jumps in front of the car. Just like they you know, staged the dead baby on the beach in Greece and all that. I go to the comments. Everybody's mad thinking we're the ones saying this. Well, go to our, go to our info wars, and I'll show you. Horrific moment, Muslim woman is mowed down by... Grinning driver who then stops to take picture during anti. Oh, they changed the headline. Look, when this came out. Ah, now. Right, Bart. Molenbeek, far right, hit and run was Muslim on Muslim attack. A local drunk youth named Muhammad. It hit and run by a Muslim woman in Molenbeek this week, blamed on far right anti Islam administrators, was in fact perpetrated by an allegedly drunk local youth named Muhammad. So I don't mean to just you know, divert off, but it's this constant lying and then saying German men raped the women in Cologne and all this. They're almost all military age men. They invaded Syria. They're coming in. Now Europe's bringing them. We're going to talk about that at the start of the next hour with Mr. Rawls. But the time we have, sir, in this short segment, getting back to you in the next four minutes, 
specifically with my military question, what are they thinking when they say don't visit Patriot sites, don't, you know, George Washington's bad, the founding fathers are bad. They actually, as you know, teach the military that. That's actually woken the military up. What are the globalists thinking? Well, they're hoping that they can control the, the military. But the problem is, uh, even with a dumbed down electorate, a, a dumbed down populace that's uh, reaching military age, even with that, people still have basic common sense and they can see the, what's going on in the world around them. They get curious. They now turn to the internet. It used to be newsletters and magazines and that sort of thing, but they turn to the internet to, to seek the truth. And uh, they're hoping that they can control access to that knowledge, to keep that knowledge out of the hands of the, the people that they want to have as their foot soldiers. It's not working. They tried firewalling uh, more than a thousand Patriot websites at the Pentagon two years ago. And there was a quiet rebellion that went on where uh, first people were saying, well, you, you can't firewall us. Or, or if you firewall us, only firewall us, firewall us during working hours. But we want to have unlimited internet access before working hours, on our lunch hour, and after work. And the IT staff at the Pentagon backed down. They actually relented because there was such there were so many people at the Pentagon that were upset about and that's what I'm getting at they don't they understand that when they tried to blacklist you and myself and others that just made everybody come check out what we're saying they hear exactly. we're telling the truth and, then, and, and I mean it, it backfired didn't it right what happened was people were were using VPN virtual private networks or web surfing from at home or web surfing from wireless networks literally from their mobile devices in the parking lot of the Pentagon. This is so exciting. Bow. Stay there. It's back in 70 seconds. This is a microcosm of everything. Thank this you. For they're not invincible, media. folks. The globalists can be defeated if you realize you have the power. Today. You are the resistance. Back in 70. Stay with us. All right. Coming up at about 24 after, we're going to start opening the phones up for the balance of the hour for James Wesley Rawls, our guest. Also want to hit a bunch of other news items with him and get his Get his take on it. The toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. That was a short segment. This is a short segment. In the long segment, we're going to get into the caliphate, his latest novel, and, and what the next big shoe to drop in his uh, brain is uh, with the uh, man that heads up survivalblog.com, James Wesley Rawls. I'm Alex Jones of Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. But getting back to what you were just saying... To me, this is key because I used to get mad at police and some of the police state stuff. I realize that's what they're being trained to do is we, sh we should change it above them. That's our political job. But on average, cops tend to be more awake than the general public. And uh, I mean, some jurisdictions are very corrupt, but others are pretty good folks overall. And so that's why you've got the Black Lives Matter, the UN Strong Cities Initiative coming in to take over. I mean, it's actually happening. And so we also have the military even more awake. So they're saying the number one domestic enemy will be returning veterans and gun owners. Well, that woke up military training to take on domestic terrorists who they're being taught are themselves. So there's a major disconnect in the elites. And if they would have disconnects, like not realizing when you tell Marines and Army troops on bases across the country, don't go to Infowars.com, that they're all going to go to Infowars.com or when they get up there and badmount the founders and Christians and gun owners and make the men wear red high heel shoes, that it's not demoralizing them, it's turning them against their controllers. There's, I mean, you take a bunch of socialist engineers, give them ROTC merit, give them an officer's commission, stick them in the military, it's so alien, they've caused a total wake up. I mean, I, I really see this as one of the biggest missteps ever. Go ahead, sir, and give me your view on that. We are in a situation where they're, the controllers are losing control because there's so many different channels of media now available. They basically can't stop the signal. The truth is out there. It's people like you and bloggers and podcasters and journalists 
uh, non-mainstream journalists that are who are waking people up to the truth. And a lot of those people are in military organizations. They're uh, people, um, as I mentioned before, at the Pentagon, for example, uh, people who are on general staffs, people who are in, in military intelligence. And, and most people don't realize that there's as many people in military intelligence with the different military services as there are with the uh, the CIA and the NSA and the NRO, for example. And, and there is, from my sources, I'm not saying they're perfectly good, but the Army groups and others are basically battling the foreign interests that have come in and taken over the CIA. And there's been a decades-long war now emerging where more and more Army officers are even able to go on air now and actively badmouth the corrupt system, which, for folks that don't know, is basically mutiny, but it's not mutiny because the military realizes the country's now been captured. Right. Uh, th there's definitely different competing camps within the intelligence agencies and within the military. Uh, a, a lot of the uh, really conservative, libertarian, and you know, freedom-minded general officers were purged during the, uh, the seven years of the Obama administration. But there's still a lot of people in the enlisted ranks, warrant officers, junior officers, and up into the field grade officers who have a concept of American liberty. And they cannot quench that. They can't, they can't just turn, can't, they just can't put that fire this out. This is the key to everything. Stay there. I want you to come back and speak to this at length, then into the caliphate, survivalblog.com. This is the key. They've already decapitated the federal government and brought in their operatives, but the people that actually run the military are still there and they're awake now. This is a key time. About 160 years ago, 165 years ago, the British crown was having trouble expanding and maintaining its empire. So they financed their top scientists, this is all in books that have been published at the time and since then, to come up with social engineering and social control and to develop machines that could track and trace everyone and to develop a cultural systems of what they called mind war. That was actually a British term and then it was picked up by the Germans. It's what they called psyops or psychological warfare. But what happens when people in the end game realize that they're the target of it as well? You see, globalism isn't just taken over because it's a better system. That would just take over by adoption, free market. It's taking over to end all competition. It's taking over to end the family, to end our culture as you know it. Go read the book, Things to Come. Go see what the head of the Fabian Socialists said they were going to do. He wrote more nonfiction books than he wrote fiction. I've probably read seven or eight nonfiction books by H.G. Wells, and I'll be honest, I can't read any more of them. I used to read all their books and stuff and Carol Quigley, and I already know their plan. It's really scary to actually read them saying it and licking their lips and stuff. Folks, these people really don't like you, okay? And you need to understand, they're the same people that used the people of Ireland and Scotland and England who were strong to build their world tyranny. They were colonialized by the Romanian and, and Habsburg, who weren't even really German criminals that had learned how to control the final spice trade coming in out of the Middle East there in what's Transylvania today. And, and, and they perfected torture and political manipulation and really a lot of bad stuff. Not that Western Europe was perfect, but they brought all that in, they took over, and God help us, man. And notice, now the West gets the blame for what these people have used us to build for them. And they're now moving into their end game. So you hear terms like communist, fascist, socialist, those are all to confuse you. They're different forms of command and control that the elites want because they can manage command and control because it's centralized. Read Tragedy and Hope, we sell the book, Infowarstore.com, back in print, written by this guy that published it so the State Department's own people could understand what they're doing. Wait, we fund communist and fascist and socialist, and we want dictators, and we don't want freedom? And it's an 1,100-page book explaining to them that none of this means anything, that we're taking over, and that we're the new British Empire, and that we know best, so just do it, and you'll be taken care of. They're so arrogant, they published it.
People actually started reading it, though, so they took it out of print. That's where this goes. James Wesley Rawls and I are not up here giving you our opinion. Do you understand that? The thousands of quotes, the statements, the admissions, it's far worse than I can tell you. Prince Philip, Prince Charles, constantly talking about how they want to kill everybody and bring in world government to forcibly inoculate you, you know, cancer viruses. They mean business. They mean business. And the fact that some whacked out Transylvanian royalty wants a world government to run your life, and, and, and they're always, you know what, they're always digging up on the castle properties and the rest of it, little kids. I mean, folks, you cannot make up how evil these people are. I'm going to stop right there. But again, it's legends. They're not physical vampires. They're a bloodline of psychotics. And, and they're not even running the show. They just kicked off and funded science. You know, there was major science in the 1850s, folks. They focus on the science of control. And this has been copied. It's been exported. It's been refined. There's all these new systems. I'm ranting. I'm going to go back to our guest. You just have to understand what we face. The terms you want to know is the fact that globalism is really totally corrupt scientific colonialism by multinational mega banks and institutions that are above the law and are the new royalty with the power to tax but are exempt from it. Letter of mark given to their operatives, their mercenaries. And they're reversing the Western invasion where they'd say, you're going to go put on a ship or we're going to kill you. I mean, I mean, you think it was fun when, you know, like the 1600s, more than half of crews died routinely, usually about a third on an African or South American voyage. You think they weren't slaves? And the West then tried to end slavery. But within the West was growing this great evil. And so now you're facing scientific colonialism at a multinational above the state level, playing the states off against each other, the individuals against each other, the great game times a thousand. And nested in the heart of this, nested in the core of this, is then using the giant third world populations with promises of their own colonialism to come to the West and get the free welfare and the free goodies to be brought here to be programmed with liberation theology, hate the West theology, and then you conquer the third world and the West by playing them off against each other. And that is their admitted plan. You have been given the enemy's blueprint. What are you going to do about it? Now, Mr. Rawls, I'm going to try to shut up and give me the floor now, but I want to set the table here. Getting back into the military waking up, uh, the bureaucrats waking up, a lot of people understanding now as we near the end game that the patriots were right the last 60 plus years from Barry Goldwater up to you and others, warning people. And so now how does that affect the battle space? Where does this go? And, and why is Islam, as I think you correctly predicted over a decade ago, the secret skeleton key weapon that they're going to use to finish their world government takeover? Well, Alex, uh, the... The goal, obviously, is, is control. They want to consolidate power. They want to institute a global system. And all the pieces are in place right now to make that happen. With the internet, with the uh, possibility of going cashless for the world currencies, and soon to be a, just a single currency, I think that's, that's definitely their goal. They have this game plan, and they are indeed, just as you said, playing one group off of another to, to make all this happen. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the last hour, the, the real tool that's being used right now following the end of the Cold War is using radical Islam as a pawn. And as I mentioned before, I think that that pawn may may actually be a, a knight or a queen in in hiding. It's it's going to turn against them uh, with dramatic uh, results when all is said and done. We are seeing this all play out, uh, and the the pace at which change is taking place is getting faster and faster and faster. And they're, they're trying to manipulate this whole game by keeping people in the dark. They're failing at that. And at this point, it's gonna come down to crisis, whether it's a global pandemic, 
whether it's a global economic collapse or whether it's a global war, they're going to have to play the crisis card very soon because they basically lost control economically and they have lost, they don't realize it yet, but they have lost the information war. People like you have woken up too many people. And at this point, the only arrow left in their quiver is absolute crisis. That's right. And we're now going into it. Um, Hillary admitted they're losing the information war four years ago to Congress. But I don't think she even realizes how much they've lost the information war. Is there any way to get these cornered rats to not destroy everything, to keep power? Couldn't the states get together in a first-run constitutional convention just to have letters of demand and basically tell the top operatives, stop their anti-American activities, don't shut down power plants, don't let China have unfair trade deals, start there, and then um, give them a year to exit the United States, I mean, th that, that, of course, as you know, as a student of history, Mr. Rawls, has been done before with corrupt elites who are like a cancer and are too hard to dislodge. I mean, could mm -hmm. some type of through the system armistice happen and, and just have it, these it, people flake off? That is possible. And I think one venue for that may be the upcoming Republican National Convention, because they don't control all of those individual delegates. And... Once a, 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 a party convention is in a lot of ways like a constitutional convention. Once the floor is open, if enough people call for a discussion of a particular topic, it can't be stopped. And I think that at the upcoming Republican National Convention, a lot of these fundamental issues may be raised. And we may see another Barry Goldwater moment for our, for our nation coming up. And it could very well happen there. That's right, because when they engage in this open theft, it is gonna be a huge wake up call on top of the wake up call that's already happening and people are really gonna see through it. Do you think it's arrogance overall or fear that they're just nakedly going, yeah, your vote doesn't count, get used to it all over TV? <laughs> well, the, the, the level of arrogance is just horrendous. To, to think that they can attempt to stage manage a, an entire political convention by manipulating the rules of that convention. I think it may backfire on them. I think they're, you know, it, well, one of two things are gonna happen. Either there's gonna be absolute pandemonium on the floor, or there's gonna be a walkout of a lot of delegates they may just walk to a hotel across the street and start their own convention. That's the idea. I'm going to call Roger Stone right now because obviously his former business partner now is pretty much the head of the campaign. They've still got Lewandowski over there on the side. Uh, but uh, wow, that is a great idea. And I, I kind of think that's what may be actually planned, but it's funny you brought that up. Well, again, things are spinning out of control. And at this point, uh, again, I think it's going to come down to a massive crisis of some sort as kind of a last ditch effort for them to maintain their control. And as things because get more out of control, as, sure, sure, as things get more out of control, it's going to get more out of control and more out of control. Let's say on a scale of one to 100, 100 being the most out of control, you know, full on nuclear war happening and just total insanity and, you know, zero being uh, Valhalic uh, pastoral uh, utopias. <laughs> Where are we on that scale, sir? Well, I'd say we're somewhere in the 80s or in the 90s here right now. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 they're losing control. Um, and at this point, unless they have a crisis that they can use as the excuse to collapse the stock market, cause a banking crisis, and institute a global currency, they'll, they'll need something of that scale to, cons to continue to consolidate power, because otherwise power is gonna slip through their grasp. And so what you keep like, hammering like is they're gonna pull fingers. a crisis, they're gonna false flag, or they're gonna wind somebody up, and they're gonna create a crisis to be the saviors. It's so huge, it diverts 
from stealing elections and everything else. Yeah, uh, they'll probably have a a, a event uh, of, on a grand scale. It won't just be something like Sandy Hook, okay? It's going to be more like a, uh, an, a major assassination, say, for example, of a... Of a, of a key political figure or a key candidate that they'll then try to pin on the patriot movement, for example. That's right. So a, they could false flag and kill Donald Trump and blame it on the patriots, or they could do it to Obama. That's what my gut's been telling me is we're entering the season of a political assassination to be pinned on one group or the other. It won't matter if it ever gets proven. It'll just cause war on the streets. Yes, and, and there literally will be blood in the streets if that happens. And... Again, getting back to the to the political conventions, the, the party conventions, coming out of the Democratic convention or more likely out of the Republican convention, we could see a huge uproar, especially if they attempt to uh, to broker this uh, convention and put an insider in in place of of one of the two perceived outsiders. And that's the only way. I mean, look, I'll be honest. I don't want to scare people. They could do stuff like a low yield nuke in Cleveland and then, you know, have Obama declare a civil emergency saying two, you know, in a year now we're going to have an election. And then basically, uh, I mean, all the preparations I see is if they're planning something humongous. And I, I don't want to speculate here, but I said before 9-11, look for them to blow up the World Trade Centers and blame it on their asset bin Laden. I'm not saying there isn't radical Islam, and obviously Saudi Arabia, the 28 pages, I was just saying, I could see the preparation, I could see them beta testing, I could see them getting everybody ready, and then I called it exactly as they did it. And I'm telling you, I've never seen such frightening rhetoric. Obama's hyping nuclear terror, everybody else is, saying, oh, mushroom cloud over Manhattan. Uh, in your gut and your sources, what are some of the false flag triggers you think that the, the activating the ISIS al-Qaeda sleeper cells they have all over the U.S.? What do you think it could be? It could very well be ISIS here in the United States uh, or another uh, major event in in Europe. But they, I think they, at this point, see the need to step things up a notch. So it won't just be um, guys pulling out AK-47s and hand grenades and shouting Allahu Akbar. It's going to be more like uh, nuclear dirty bombs or even uh, nuclear devices that reach critical mass, actual nuclear weapons, or biological warfare agents, or massive use of chemical agents in a confined but heavily populated space. And that by that I mean something like a subway or a stadium full of people, where there wouldn't just be Sure. Dozens of deaths or hundreds of deaths. There could be thousands of simultaneous death, deaths. And that is the level they, they want to, to step things up to that level because it's only out of that level of crisis that they can call for something like martial law. Wow. And they've already got, quote, several emergencies in Germany and France suspending people's rights. Uh, it's amazing. What do we do? I mean, I guess we call mainstream media. We, we, we do our own shows. Everybody does videos. Everybody becomes their own activist and says, we don't want nuclear terror. If there's nuclear Islamic terror, we hold you responsible, Mr. President. Uh, uh, you know, we know you're cooking something. You know, hey, ugly, we know you're cooking. Uh, you know, don't cook it up for me <laughs> to reverse uh, what uh, Hank Williams said. I mean, this is wh what do we do to stop it? I, I really don't. I really don't know an ideal solution other than to continue to wake people up and encourage people to not give up completely on the political process. I hear so many people who say it's all over. We can't do anything. No matter who gets into office, they're going to pack the Supreme Court. Blah blah blah. No, I think there still is hope for the political process. So people need to be aware. They need to be politically active. They need to be incredibly vocal. And don't be buffaloed. Uh, there's going to be a lot of, uh, of changes going on in our country in the next five years where they're going to 
use hate speech laws to try to silence people. I agree. On the and I want to talk about that next because the answer is everybody use your speech or lose it. They're openly announcing it. And I want to come back and go to calls. Right. But, but separately, James Wesley Rawls, survivalblog.com. Again, joining us here, if you just tuned in, I'm Alex Jones of Infowars.com, syndicated radio slash TV transmission every day, 12 noon to 4 p.m. Eastern. <sighs> looking at this and looking at the different things that they're pulling, I also think it's important to reach out to some of the bots and some of the mainline liberals who come out to protest Trump. And once they actually talk to the Trump supporters, I see a lot of videos where people are actually coming together. That's not getting a lot of coverage in the media, but it's happening. I mean, when Louis Farrakhan says, we don't need to bring more Muslims in because they're going to blow stuff up and then regular Muslims are going to get blamed. Nobody covered that because it makes Trump look so common sense. And so I really see them being afraid of during this crisis, everybody trying to reach out to each other. I mean, I think that's a big part of this. Yeah, I, I, if their goal is to divide groups, and the groups um, throw that back in their face by actually showing some cohesiveness and a unity of voice saying, yes, we want less government, we want less control, we want more individual freedom, that's going to really throw a monkey wrench into their, into their plans. Sure, and you They want to continue to divide and conquer. And if, if we can uh, actually find some common ground with people on the other end of the political spectrum, it's going to thwart their plans. Separately, you, you bring up, don't give up on the political process. It's become fake. It's become a fraud. But as we get involved, we expose the voting machines. As, as, as we run for office, good people get elected. It, it's a battle. We're fighting crooks. Good men and women always trump them, pun intended, when we finally take action. It may take 10 years, may take 30 years, may take six months. You never know how it's going to work. We have the moral high ground. And by going there and forcing them to steal the nomination, that only accelerates the awakening. People think, oh, it's corrupt, exactly. give up, you can't fix it. No, I've always said resistance is victory because in my own life, but also studying history, it's the animating contest of liberty that empowers our liberty muscles. Mr. Rawls? I, I agree with you, Alex. The... Um the, the political process still has uh, hope. There's still a, at least a kernel of hope there for America, and we cannot give up on the process. Well, look at how and, fast people are waking up right now. Well, people are indeed waking up, and seeing what comes out of the Republican convention, if it is, if they do their brokered deal and they, have, they, they, they do their, what it really comes down to is power brokering, and people see that, I think uh, they, they can't stop people from waking up to what's really going on. And people who have called themselves Republicans for many, many years are going to suddenly stop calling themselves Republicans if they see that the, the convention. That's is right. It's a Democratic Party plan. They're the dominant party. The Republicans, since the Rockefeller days, just 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 you know, play along. They're preparing to finally go ahead and kill the party uh, entirely and create one party rule with a vestigial Republican party in the South. This is the true fall of America. I want to get your take on that. James Wesley Rawls, survivalblog.com. I'll we'll talk about the caliphate and then go right to calls. Talk about your new novel straight ahead that folks can find in bookstores everywhere. Survivalblog.com in the uh, land of promise. First book in the counter caliphate chronicles. Look, I don't want to get up here on a high horse, but I grew up in a family that was heavily informed about politics and what was really going on in the world. And I didn't think anything big deal of it when I was a kid. Now talk about this. People use it as a discrediting point, act like it's a secret and play a clip from the show. I'm saying it on my show that there were a lot of people that were army officers, a lot of people that worked at intelligence agencies, uh, people that knew about what was going on. They were all like Mr. America, like Superman characters, just like Mr. I mean, absolutely change old ladies tires, go get blood, work, go to the Salvation Army on Christmas. Good Christian people. And they were manipulated into this whole system. And by the time I was a little kid, I mean, people come over, family come over and stuff. I would just hear about the Federal Reserve, the takeover and the communists and the, they're going to break up the family. You can't believe what these people are doing. And, 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 and just people sit around the coffee table, just like, you know, Dallas cops coming in and FBI agents and, you know, people running around, you know, just freaking out. And I'm like five years old, like watching all this. Uh, and, you know, like family getting blown up in Guatemala and being shipped in on a C-130 and, you know, just all sorts of stuff. And 
Uh, I mean, Buckley works here, and you know, his dad was down there, and they were routinely attacked by rebels in the government district and the house blown up they were in because it had all the antennas on the roof. I mean, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to get into the whole deal. Just the point is that I sit here, and I know this is all real. I know they're coming after us. And you need to understand something. The globalist, they love third world. They love radical Islam. They love authoritarianism because it's like them. They hate Christians. They hate America. They hate free market. They hate all of it. And they wanted totalitarianism to have their way with us. They're really bad news, people. And you need to understand, people think it's brave to fight them. I'd be the most brave person in the world to not resist the globalist. If I'm out on a sailboat in the middle of a great lake and all of a sudden a huge leak forms and the boat's going to sink and it's freezing water, I'm going to be bailing as fast as I can to get back to shore, not because I have courage. I'm going to be busting my butt because I want to live. <laughs> so that's why I don't call up and say I'm a hero. Do not call up and say how great I am. Folks, it's normal to fight this. It's abnormal not to. These people are really bad, and humanity deserves not to go through this anymore. You've seen all the tyrannies, and most governments are horrible and oppressive, and now you see the way we're going, it's bad news. I want to go back and get into Zoo Novel, take your phone calls. I'm not going to belabor this, but you need to understand that the reason I can be on the same page with somebody like Rawls or the same page as a Colonel Schaefer, or the same page as a Tosh Plumley whistleblower, or a same page as a Lieutenant Marine Corps Colonel you know, who was on last week, or the same page as everybody else, or the same page as congressmen that come on the show, like Walter Jones, is because it's a real page. It's like the Sammy Hagar song. It's a fact, not my point of view, and you know it's true. And so, debate's over. We have a scientific tyranny coming in that's very easy to defeat because it's so big and stinking and open and has been so arrogant. Because all the other tyrannies came as tanks or weapons or troops. So they thought, oh, we're corporate, we're sophisticated. The hillbillies won't look at what we're doing. Well, the hillbillies wouldn't look when everything was still pretty nice. Now they're looking and they're finding out you did it. You're not getting away with this. You won't be safe anywhere with your money. I don't have some big raging thing to prove to want a war with you. I'm not an idiot. I want to stop this now. So I hope listeners and people understand this isn't a game. And when I say tell your friends and family about the show, Infowars.com, Infowars.com forward slash show. When I tell you go to Infowars.com forward slash show and download the free iPhone out of the Droid app or to send out articles or to send out podcasts, some people go, well, the government will get me if I do that. We're the government. We're the people. The military is ignoring all these threats. Just like Rawls said, they're coming after our free speech. Now is the time to stand, to protest, to demonstrate. You think I want to go to Cleveland when I got three little kids? You think I really want to get up there? You think I really want to be all over the streets? I'm going to be there. Because I'm afraid of letting these people win. A lot more than I'm afraid of what could happen to me. Stuff in the game, people. These people want to hurt you and your family. Okay, you understand that? They hate you because you're a good person. They want to dominate you. Where is your instinct that God gave you to resist these people? Get up. And take action. I want to see our stories, our videos, Rawls material, everything plastered everywhere. This is a war. I have climbed up on the billboards at night, personally. I have put the flyers everywhere. I have flown around on airplanes. I've done stuff I don't even talk about on air. And I'm not going to get into it here today. I do it at the grocery store. I do it at church everywhere. Because I'm fighting for my life. You understand that? You're in a fight for your life and your children's future. You need to act like it. And I'm not bitching at anybody. But they've put us into a trance, myself included. And I need people to go to InfoWarsStore.com and get the Hillary for President t-shirts, to get them all on Lobe, to meet like-minded people, and to spread the word and support the transmission. We brought the Hillary for President shirt back. It's been augmented. It's a new edition, but it looks pretty much the same. We also have the new vitamin mineral fusion. You absolutely need that with your diet to boost your health. Everything else, it's a game changer. X2, super male vitality, the methyl cobalamin, vitamin B12, secret 12 is back in. Infowarslife.com, infowarsstore.com, or call toll free 888 253 3139. 
I want the money to have more reporters be able to go and cover everything and not spend all my time jacking around trying to get sponsors. And I'm not complaining, but we need fuel in this war. We need to be strong to face the enemy in the storm. And I thank you all for your support. I know it's rough out there. Thank you for your prayers, first and foremost. All right, Mr. Rawls, I want to give you the floor for about six, seven, eight minutes because I just get really excited talking about all this stuff because things are so earnest now. It's all happening now. We've been proven right. I know it's, how does it feel for you writing for 30 years to now see it all proven right and, and, and to see that your work has become basically prescient? I mean, I know personally, I'm not excited about the fact that I've been proven right. It's a very sick feeling, but at least we've been proven right. So more people pay attention now. And then let's get into the caliphate. Sure. Well, it is gratifying to see that, um, you know, back in 1990, when I wrote the first draft of my first novel, people were saying that it was absolutely inconceivable to see a, a stock market collapse and a collapse in the U.S. dollar as a currency unit. And now people aren't saying that anymore. They, they recognize that it really is a possibility. And it, it is gratifying to see that people are waking up. But beyond that, it, it's important that as people wake up, they are politically active, they don't hold back, from sharing this knowledge with their friends and that they are fully committed to the fight ahead of them. You know, the old joke is that uh, when, when the farmer was putting together breakfast, the chicken was involved, but the pig was committed. And uh, <laughs> that, that's, committed. The yeah, that's, that's the stage that we're at right now where, um, you ha we have to be fully committed to this because the, the, the battle is on. It's, it's right before us. And what I'm trying to do with my new novel series, the Counter Caliphate series, is to wake people up to the big picture of what's going on geopolitically and to point out to them that we, we are not just victims of our circumstances, okay? We can actually make a change as individuals that we can individually push for the establishment of a, a Christian nation of refuge, for instance. That's what I, I put forth in the first novel in the series. That kind of change can take place. And we because we are a globally interconnected uh, society where individuals can make a, 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 an enormous difference, the individual efforts of waking people up, organizing, and creating alternatives to the, the current system can happen. They will happen. With God's help, these kind of changes will take place. And uh, just like cockroaches scurrying away from the light, you turn enough lights on, like you're doing with all your educational uh, quests, the 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 roaches are going to go scurrying for cover and people will realize that they individually can make a difference and they can truly change things. That's the encouraging thing. And that's You're right. why as a Christian and as a patriot, I hold out a lot of hope because I think in the long run, we are bound to win. And as your, as your promo says, the, you know, the, we are on the march. We, we, we will prevail in the long run, and that's very encouraging. So I do encourage people to um, get active and to share this knowledge as much as they can with others. Uh, no one knows who said it. Uh, last time I checked, it's, it's, it's author unknown of the statement, there are no atheists in foxholes. But it is true that armies throughout history um, know about providence. They know about trying to purify themselves. They know about trying to seek God, and that's because they've learned, even, even the most arrogant atheist, that uh, you, you know you laugh at God, uh, it's very unlucky. But you talk about George Washington and others, providence is a real thing, and I've experienced it in my life. And I just feel sorry for people that really think this, that this world's a joke and, and who don't, don't think there aren't good and evil forces active in the world. Those people are so spiritually blind they have no idea what's coming or what they're about to face. Well, that's uh, that's the, our real hope, really, is in Christ. And 
as we look at this this whole global political mess uh, that's developed, we can have hope in the certain knowledge of our salvation, and we can be absolutely fearless with that knowledge in the fight ahead, knowing that we know our destination. If we're going to heaven, they can't take that away from us. So we can be fearless in this fight. Other and tidbits, other tidbits before we go to calls that you'd like to relay to the listeners today. Yeah, his, his Skype was breaking up and we just lost his audio. We should come back in a moment. Did his, did his Skype completely disconnect? Okay, James, can you hear us? Yeah, I have you. Okay, uh, any other little tidbits you want to add before we go to some calls? Well, um, I just want to encourage people to um, wake up individually, wake up their friends. It's time to stock up, team up, and train up. Uh, because we're far beyond just politics with this now. And the, the problems that have been created are going to affect us on a physical level. I mean, in terms of individual sustenance, in, t in terms of individual uh, you know, just personal security of staying alive. So you need to you need to have food storage. You need to have training. You need to have uh, alternative currency, whether it's precious metals or ammunition for barter. It's it's actually come to that time where if you don't stock up, if you don't team up with your friends who are like minded, and if you don't train up. Uh, because those supplies just by themselves are kind of, of useless unless you know exactly what you're doing with them. There's a learning curve with all of these things. It's time truly, folks, to stock up, team up, and train up to be ready for the dark days ahead. And it only runs from bad to worse. We're not trying to be negative here, folks. They plan to collapse Western civilization to bring in social engineering. They're going to make you very poor and desperate to do that. They do it in every communist takeover. This is not a communist program. But the globalists are using communist uh, re-education tools and even communist terminology now in army manuals that are declassified. So this is very, very dangerous. They use what's worked before. Uh, they've been preparing the ground here for a while. Tim in Wyoming has a question for our guest, Mr. Rawls. Go ahead, Tim. Yes, yes, hello. Thanks for taking my call. Uh, my question for you, Mr. Rawls, is Alex asked this question of listeners yesterday, and I never got a chance to call in and say what my line of the sand was. What is your line in the sand for when, when we should, uh, I mean, basically stand up and be counted, so to speak? Because uh, I mean, I'm already doing as much as I can possibly do in my small town and whatnot. I think a lot of that's targeting. Of I mean, the people around you are just minions of this system. So going after them doesn't do anything. That's why I'm defensive. At least if somebody's attacking me, I know they're in the wrong. But a lot of this is just exposing the operatives so that if everything does go to a shooting war, people know who the foreign enemy is. But uh, Mr. Rawls, your comments. Right. Well, I, I think everybody has to draw their own individual line, as it were, because for someone who is a, a single person, for example, without a family, uh, without children to worry about, that line in the sand might be a lot farther out than someone who has a large family to worry about, that they're going to, um, you know, lock and load at a much later date than someone who doesn't have that level of uh, responsibility for a family. That's right. Or my line in the sand is protect my family, protect my community, uh, n not be offensive. I'm offensive with information and then try to be defensive like a mother hen. But then at what point then do you go uh, aggressive? And boy, once the people that are in a mother hen position go aggressive, that's when heads really roll uh, historically, correct? Yes. And uh, again, people have to be wise as serpents and meek as doves, as the Bible teaches. Right now, if you look at what happened uh, with the Bundy Ranch and with the Malheur Wildlife Refuge, uh, people who stood up too early, too vocally, and who made some tactical mistakes in terms of committing felonies on federal property, property are now feeling the wrath of the federal government with multiple, multiple felonies. They walked into them. a trap. Yes, big time. And unfortunately, they all did it on camera, gave their names, and were seen on camera with weapons. And the, and the sight of those 
of those weapons alone was used for as felony charges of uh, use of firearms to the commission of a felony. And they thought just because so they were, people, quote, in the right on a few issues, they didn't know about the optics. It was very, very foolish. Right. And so people have to be wise about that sort of thing. You have to be you have to pick your fights. You have to choose your battles wisely. Don't tilt at windmills. That's one reason I've never gotten involved in even though the tax system in the United States is inherently wrong. I chose not to fight the tax battle because I saw what happened to too many tax protests. Well, look, I'm, exactly. We're fighting system. the general globalist occupied takeover, that it's a worldwide takeover. It's illegitimate. We're occupied. We're not fighting each tentacle. We're exposing to everyone that this is an illegitimate takeover that's now more naked than ever. Right. So, again, choose your, choose your battles wisely. And when you go to a public protest, you need to think very seriously about uh, how far away you park your car, for example, so your license plate number won't be uh, photographed, and whether or not you're going to disguise yourself. But don't be buffaloed into not attending at all. Just well, well I say either choose to be attend. totally public or be underground. That's, that's the model I think. People should either be completely underground or totally out in the open. I'm totally out in the open. James Leslie Rawls is our guest. I'm Alex Jones. Coming up at about 8 after, David Knight's going to take over to cover all the election news, a whole bunch of big interviews that our crew uh, in multiple states uh, have been getting following Donald Trump. That's in the fourth hour today. Many stations are picking up the fourth hour. Some don't, uh, but anybody can find the video feeds and audio feeds at infowars.com forward slash show. Also, to be sent exclusive articles, exclusive videos, uh, exclusive material so we can stay in touch with you even when we're being attacked or the website's been taken down sometimes when we get hit, infowars.com forward slash newsletter. Just put in a, a, a random email you make just to get Infowars material or your regular email or whatever. Tell your friends and family, sign up as well so we can stay in contact with you. That is a key lower tech way for us to send you information that you can then spread on to others. Survivalblog.com. You know, I want to get Mr. Rawls on about his novel itself and Islam uh, for a full hour or more in the near future. But right now, uh, let's just go ahead and go back to calls. Speaking of the caliphate, more in Texas. You're on the air with James Wesley Rawls. Uh, how y'all doing today? Good, brother. Go ahead. Uh, my question, and I don't want to be long-winded, but my question is uh, the, the original founders of Islam was black people, and it wasn't Arabs. But my question is, since the Europeans actually helped put the Arabs in charge, is it kind of like, I don't want to say justice, but is it payback for them allying with Arabs instead of black people as they should have allied with? That's my question. All right. All right. Well, let me try to throw. I, don't, uh, I mean, I get what you're saying, that it is true that the British Empire and others kind of set up Islam, put the Wahhabists in control, the worst sect, obviously, who did say that black people weren't humans in, in, in their, uh, not the Koran, they wrote that afterwards and kill all the blacks they find in areas of Africa. That's why I don't get so many blacks you know, joining that form of Islam. But Mr. Rawls, you've studied this. What's your take on what he said? Well, uh, to begin with, I think the whole concept of race is spurious. I think there's only one race, and that's the human race. Yes. And for many, many years, kings and princes and parliaments have been trying to divide people by putting labels on the so-called races and to, to drive a wedge between people, to create conflict, which they can then manage to their to meet their goals. So I reject the whole concept of racism to begin with, uh, racism and That's racism. right, it's balkanization. Thank you, Moore, but it's an interesting question. Well, I mean, here's Mexico, uh, six months to a year hard labor. They torture you, they shock you, they beat you. That's in The Guardian, I said just last week. They beat you up, they tear, I mean, Mexico has some of the most draconian rules, and but, they can't have huge third world populations coming in. They'll collapse even worse. I'm not saying what they're doing is good. How are we supposed to take all these people, though, and give them everything free? I'm not against these poor Latin Americans. But the globalists are bringing them in, turning them into a tribal, racial-based group, even if that's a fraud, to then ally with the socialists and vote our guns away. What do we do then, Mr. Rawls? Well, we need to reject racism. We need to point out when it's being used as a psychological weapon. Yes. And we can't, we can't fall for the race baiting. It's important that we recognize that as American citizens, 
we represent the the end result of what our founding fathers had in mind. And it, it actually worked remarkably well for many, many generations. And yeah, granted we're, we're in, in dire straits right now and we've run up a huge national debt, but they cannot extinguish the spirit of individual liberty that still exists in this I country. I totally agree, and but, but we can't have totally open borders and just bring people in and sign them up with the socialist. No, that we we have to we have to be very uh, protective of our borders. But for people who are American citizens, we have to fully uh, bring them up in the culture. Absolutely, I mean to bring them in to, to the Renaissance. Seventy seconds. Thank you, Mr. Rawls. Stay there. We'll be back with more calls. Matt and others. Infowars.com is the tip of the spear, folks. And I don't like that fact, but that's the way it is. So pray for us. We need it. Believe me. We are broadcasting worldwide. We are now well in to the second hour. We'll be here till 3 o'clock Central Standard Time today. David Knight host the fourth hour. Now until about 15 after next hour, Billy Corgan is our guest in studio. And then we have Dr. Andrew Wakefield, a true hero, coming on. He has been vindicated that autism is major league connected to uh, infections in the gut. And that's even in the New York Times. And it turns out the British government did two studies previously that they classified that found the same thing that Dr. Wakefield had discovered. So uh, there are lawsuits involved. His partner in the UK has now had his medical license given back to him. Uh, Robert De Niro, of course, was going to air it at the Rebecca Film Festival, the film Vaxxed, that was partially shot and produced here at the InfoWars News Center in Austin, Texas. Uh, and so uh, it's obviously near and dear to us. And Robert De Niro said a high-level government official personally threatened him, but that everyone should see the film. So we're going to be talking about what vaccines are really doing. This is social control. This is social engineering. We have the CDC documents. They're scared. And just like the 9-11 Commission, and just like the Congressional Commission, is suppressing the 28 pages. Doesn't matter. Folks that have read it are going public, like Congressman Jones, Senator Graham, and others. Bipartisan. And our government stood down with Saudi Arabia, with the Bushes, and bare minimum allowed the attacks to take place. The Saudi Arabian ambassador to the United States, his family, his wife, for years was giving money transfers to the hijackers, who themselves were decoys. But the point is, it's all coming down. I was just talking to Billy Corgan, who is a super smart guy. And I'm not being patronizing. Everybody knows he is. He doesn't give a lot of interviews because mainstream media is dying. He wants to talk about that today. Uh, they twist everything you do. They're a bunch of critic snots that hate artists and people that, quite frankly, are smarter than them. And that's what social justice warrior crap is. is it is the elite turning loose on the real intellectuals and artists and liberals, real liberals, turning loose basically fascists that call themselves liberals to attack anyone that gets outside the lines. And that's what's been happening. We've talked a lot about it behind the scenes. You've told me amazing stuff that I've talked to top executives that if they've confirmed, talked to other big rock stars, they've said, yeah, no, that's true. Uh, but you're one of the only people, because they go after Dave Mustaine. He had courage, but notice he hadn't been political in a while. I talked to him all the time, great guy. You still go public, even though they, when you come on, they come after you in hundreds of publications. But they're out of bullets. They're discredited. I mean, it's an honor. So I'm going to try to shut up because I get really excited when we hang out because your energy level is really you know, good and it resonates with me to talk about the state of the world. But you were really, during the last five minutes when we were on break, crystallizing so much. So I don't want to repeat what you said. I want to give you the floor, Lee Corgan, to break down here in studio in Austin, Texas, founder of Smashing Pumpkins, so many other successful bands. What is it, 40 million albums sold? Um, you've got SmashingPumpkinsNexus.com. Uh, just you know, really, really, the last decade exposing global tyranny, um, or, or longer, you've been doing this for you know, more than two decades, where are we currently, in your view, as a species? Where is the planet? Why is everybody talking about the fact that they see, uh, they see a quickening happening? That's A. And then B, you said, look, I'm on a mission. This is what I want to talk about today. So you've got the floor. Great to see you. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> I don't know how to follow that. <laughs> You're so kind. Let's start here. Um, for a while, I've been thinking about making a documentary about America, and, and I'm... And, and, it went from an idea that was maybe going to go with the Pumpkins album to now we're talking about trying to find a, a partner to make it a sort of a series and what's like the new model of television, like the eight part, you know, like the 
you know, there was that everybody was talking about the making of a murder. You know, it's like the kind of the new version of TV. It's like binge watching eight part. You know, so we're looking at that model. So that's exciting because that takes it out of the typical 90 minute thing. So I traveled across the country in an RV writing songs with a buddy of mine who's a vet, two tours of Iraq, and uh, another friend of mine who's a professional wrestler, good friends, and went around and interviewed a bunch of people about America and tried to have a conversation with people above the political discourse and above the cultural discourse, which is very, very difficult because the way most people relate these days is it starts with Obama this or Trump that, or did you see what so-and-so said about somebody else? Getting people to talk about America from the from a heartful point of view, their ancestors, which you talk about a lot, you've inspired me along that uh, that path too, to talk about their feelings about what how they view America and whether that the America that they grew up believing in or not believing in is real or was it ever real? And what I found it was really fascinating because I talked to people from every type of background that most Americans have a very shared uh, conception of what America means. And the two things that I heard over and over again were opportunity and hard work. That's something they learned from their ancestors. That's our ethos. That's our, that's, that is in the American DNA, I would argue. And so what is often classified as a racial component or a class component is uh, antithetical to the foundation of the country is we came here to build something that was literally an opportunity. Now, when you say that, of course, there are people, you know, start with the Native Americans, you know, who were disenfranchised along the way. So that vision of opportunity has continued to grow. And now we've reached another critical mass point in our nation's history where where is the line of expansion in terms of immigration, in terms of tolerance, in terms of welcoming, uh, in terms of welfare sustainability, you know, what, where, what, where are the lines? So talking about that more in the symbolic uh, 250 plus year arc of the country. So transcending the divide and conquer. Yes. Uh, jamming. Absolutely. And it's amazing, amazing how when you talk to, and I would encourage anyone to have these discussions with themselves. When you talk about what America really means to them, there's a lot of love left in people's hearts for this country. That surprised me because the general feeling is we're a nation in decline and we're about to go boom. You talk to some people and they don't think that. They think this is just another you know, uh, you know, bump in the road. The reason we're in decline is the robber barons admit they want a monopoly. They want to end uh, prosperity. They want to end an expanding pie because they want central control and they're scapegoating capitalism for what they're really running, crony capitalism. Right. And you know, they talk about the bad things in America's past. Well, yeah, but you compare it to other systems. We had the most opportunity. We were the most rebellious. We were the most trailblazing. It didn't mean it was great, but compared to everything else, it was wonderful. Where you were born into your caste in Italy or in Japan or in China or in Germany or wherever you came from uh, or Brazil, you, you, know, you had to get here where you could get out of the caste and, 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 and really show who you were. I mean, let's take music. If you weren't from a rich, powerful family 200 years ago, 300 years ago in Europe, it didn't matter how good you were, you weren't going to get to write music and ever have it heard. I would still argue that we are that country. Um, it's it's so, and this is something you and I talk about. I think that you're fantastic. Uh, you know, you you often use the analogy of being the bomber over the target. You know, okay, so you're looking down. You you see things people don't see from that vantage point, and you've if you, you've invested a lot in understanding how to read those things. Uh, your military sources, your political sources. They you know the Roger Stones. They can give you that bird's eye read, just like I can give you the bird's eye read of culture, right? Or inside MTV. You name it. I mean, been there, done that. So, and, and what I would say is, and where we can be helpful, I think, is when you say, when you talk about uh, pan-national corporations, uh, you know, uh, if you're if you're in if you're in the tech world right now, your 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 sandbox is the whole world. <laughs> you're not stopping at somebody's border. And this is why, even starting five seven years ago, you started seeing those tech companies start cutting deals with. Um, communist and fascists and whatever type of governments, censoring, being willing to do whatever, because that's their playing field. Now they'll sit there and wink and say, you know, we're going to democratize the world. Every, I think most people, and particularly your audience, know that's a bunch of BS. This is this is this is capitalism at its raw power best. You can you can play it however you want. You can see however you want. It's it's you know who's got who's got a bigger gun? Who's got more? cojones at the table. Well, that's right. The globalists use capitalism when it expands their power. 
But then at the grassroots, they want communism, just like Obama said in Argentina. He said, oh, multinationally, we're going to have capitalism. Locally, we're going to have communism. I mean, when you have the president of the United States telling people in another country, use whatever political system works, I mean, that was a laughable moment. <laughs> you, you sent me a couple articles dealing with this, how, the, how President Obama is, quote, scared of Google. Well, there was an article, I think you guys maybe even ran it the other day, about a, a movie producer, a gentleman who was a Expendables 3. And he basically has come out and said, why is the Obama government which is a liberal government, very in bed with Hollywood. Why are they not going after the systems that help uh, exploit movies and disenfranchise uh, people who've invested a lot of money to make the movies, not, not to mention the crews and everything and all the unions involved? Why are they not protecting those people? Because the tech companies look the other way on the, on the illegal downloading of materials. We have the technology right now to stop the transfer of illegal music or pirated music and pirated movies. They could do that tomorrow. Why don't they do it? Because they put a code in it, and the device has the Hello? code, it either lets it or not. I've, this is, I'll tell you a quick funny story. I've uploaded my own songs to you know something, and it'll be uh, deleted because I don't have the right to do it because they have some automatic system that identifies the song and takes it down. I can't even put up my own music. Now, if they have systems in play to shut down my own music, and there's not a system there to identify that it's my music to use, you think they can't stop somebody from... I mean, yeah, some some kid in the dark web can find it, but most users are not sophisticated tech users. You know, they press a button, it works or it doesn't. I said I wouldn't do this, but I'm skipping this one network break so we get more time with Billy uh, here today. I know that causes them headaches, but we're going to skip this network break right now uh, for some stations out there. Most stations do end up uh, carrying all because this is a network break. Billy Corgan is our guest. We've got the website Smashing Pumpkins, uh, Nexus com. Thematically, though, let's 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 put this out there. I mean, repeating what you said in the five minutes we talked before we went on air, you talked about, I said, why are you here? Well, like you talk about, we want to break the trance. How do we talk to people that are in the trance? And you basically say, transcend all the current labels and things. Talk about ancestors. Talk about larger themes of humanity and destiny. Let's get into where you think the world is at this current place and where you think we're going. And, and how do we transcend the scientific admitted mind war that the big corporations and governments admit they're using. Perfect. Okay, let's start here. When somebody is lying to you, they have two choices when you call them out on the lie. They either lie more or they admit it and, and then you deal with the damage from there. So what you've done and many other people have done, and of course there's, you talk to people in the entertainment community who are usually pretty awake because they're inside these systems. We're at the point now where either the lie is gonna be triple, quadruple, double, you know, whatever on, downed on, or, or it's gonna break and we're gonna deal with the fallout here. And the election has now become the, criti the critical mass point. The catalyst. When you see the forces at play, as you, I'll use your term, uncloaking. I mean, brazen, brazen robbing of people's uh, uh, ability to uh, cast their vote in a, in a primary. When you see brazen uh, disregard of polls. When you see an uh, AP thing that came out yesterday, 6% trust in the media. Exactly, let me what show that. What business model in the world would take a 6% approval rating and keep doing the same thing that they're doing. I mean, unbelievable. Yeah, what restaurant would stay open with a 6% approval rating? Right. So what does that tell you? That says that they're not there to give you the truth. They are there as a propaganda arm of a much bigger force. Is it the U.S. government? Is it some big tech company? Who knows? Doesn't matter. And they're a facade that's already collapsed. They just can't admit it because that would be to admit defeat. That's what I'm saying. If they, the minute they admit the lie, it all crumbles. So they have to keep just doubling down like a bad gambler who thinks if I can just hit this one bet, I'm going to win all my money. So what was the term you used before we went live? Because it really crystallized it. You said, I mean, it was more than it's coming to a head. It's peaking or? Well, the, look, the Republican convention is in 90 days. And, and that is the zeitgeist moment. That's the zeitgeist. Everybody's got to be there. I don't know because listen, we live in a digital construct as much we, you know, which is why I think you were so pressing in calling this the info war. Yes, I mean, boots on the ground in the, in the sorry, in the literal sense of How the How dare word. you touch that microphone? <laughs> Slap it around if you want. <laughs> boots on the ground. The Corian abuses electronics. That's, sorry, go ahead. No, no, but I, you know, look, I, you know, look, I, I believe in, in political dissent when it's focused on real objectives, right? If you feel like you need to be there to let the world know that you care about something and you want to peacefully be involved in the process, I have no problem with that. Um, but let's go back to the, the what I think is the mo more salient point. Most people, uh, especially listeners to this program, are conversant in, in, the, in the themes that you deal with daily. 
the mind control, the the propagandizing, the 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 willingness for governments who are supposed to be our elected representatives to literally disregard um, poll after poll after poll that says they want this and that. And, and they've now reached that point where it's a total wall of lies. And they're busy buying armored vehicles and building command bunkers. <laughs> I mean, like they know it's all going down. Yeah. I, yeah. So, so if you if you're on the side of the uh, the fence that we're obviously on, which is this is all very transparent to us, and you accept that probably 25 to 35 percent of the population is either asleep or doesn't want to be woken up. So, what can you say to the people who are awake, are engaged, and wonder what they can do? I think that's the more salient point, and I think that's more helpful. Because um, so I'll start with something that I tell people when I when I talk to uh, I, every day I meet with fans before the show and and they often ask me like what can I do You have to stop clicking on things. You have to you have to you know there's the stop old, feeding the propaganda yes. medium. Right. Okay. There's the old saying vote with your feet. Okay. What did that mean? Vote okay. with your dollars. Vote with your time. Yes. So when you click on something that you think is free, it is not free. You are in, in essence disenfranchising your own power. By giving somebody else power because they want you to click on that stupid thing because it actually means something. Now that's now that system, as the article came out the other day about BuzzFeed kind of hitting the wall, uh, we're seeing now the, the, the fatigue of the clickbait society. You know, I mean, I mean, I'm somebody who they make headlines out of the most stupid stuff. It's unbelievable. They literally will troll everything I will say, and they make headlines. And I say to people all the time, why do you think they're making headlines? They're using me as a character. I wish you'd tell people, because I know you're a really private guy, that some of the inside baseball you told me, because I've talked to so many other big rock stars from the early 90s, mid 90s, when you all get called in, they tell you the new direction, you and a few others say, hell no, and then suddenly they won't play you. I mean, it literally comes down to that level of control with people that won't sell out to the system. Now, that's why I know that George Clooney and all these other people actually know what's going on. Leonardo DiCaprio, they get up there and say what they're supposed to, or they are blackballed. I mean, the, well, then, let's 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 look at it from a slightly empathetic point of view. Um, and I'm not here to say anything about it. Oh, I'm not bashing them either. Oh, they're no. slaves. You're not a slave. You stood up for it and been. You are one of the few that's continued to be successful, though, despite their support. But I mean, just just the last 20 years on air, they just constantly attack you randomly for nothing because they're scared of you. I don't think it's that. I I I I. I I wouldn't go to that level because I don't think that people are that sentient and conscious. Well, I mean, the I, minions don't know. They just know I'm they're green lighted to attack you. They're, well, no, they're part of a system. It's like nobody wants to admit that they're dumb. Okay. Nobody wants to admit they're dumb. Who wants to say, yeah, I'm dumb? Okay. Most people in the media do not see themselves as part of some bigger cabal. They, 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 you know, you just call them the trendies. Right? They like to feel they're part of a cool. They're cabal. just camp, camp followers. They're just into this cynical, mean attitude. Look, I had an instance the other day. Um, I, I haven't talked about this yet. I was in uh, New York. I was playing some shows. And I looked at the table over, and there was Michelle Fields, the young woman who is this, you know, the whole thing with Corey Lewandowski and the Trump campaign. And she was sitting there with her boyfriend, and I recognized her. Now, it's hard not to stare at somebody when they're in the zeitgeist. I mean, this woman, at that point, whatever it was a week ago, that was when that whole thing was peaking. Is Lewandowski going to be indicted? When you look at an actual human being, you know what I'm saying? You humanize them. Yes. She's not a symbol. She's a young woman sitting there. You know, she is who she is. I don't know her. I don't. You know, it, it's not my. Uh, it's not my moment to judge. It's my moment to look and say, "There's a real person who has a real belief." I don't think that's somebody who's walking around feeling. At least this is my own intuition that they're part of something. They they uh, some com, some uh, master plan. I don't think it's that sophisticated. They like to go with a particular flow. Sure, she's a drama queen. They, she wants to be successful. So he does grab her, so she escalates it and goes along with the hype. She well, jumps in the river. Yes, the, the opportunity exists to be rewarded for something, and they don't realize that they're actually sacrificing themselves at a sort of more satanic altar, if that is, you know, just to be a bit dramatic about it. In essence, you don't realize that your participation in a particular way. So if you talk. It's just like clicking. Yes, if you talk to the individual. Okay, let's 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 take the most empathetic point of view. This young one woman felt in her heart, in her heart's heart, that she was assaulted. Okay, let's say let's take that as complete truth. The minute she crossed into certain uh, territories, she becomes somebody else's pawn. I'm, I doubt you could sit her here and she would tell you she's a pawn. At some point, I woke up and realized that I was a pawn. 
And so my natural human instinct was, I don't want to be anybody's bitch here. I don't want to be a pawn, excuse my French. I don't want to participate in something that I know will ultimately hurt my children and their children. You want to be conscious, free will, not a robot. Can you, so the point is, can you exist truthfully in a system that is set up to disenfranchise you and disempower you at every conceivable level? So let's take the soccer mom. She gets up in the morning. She drops the kids off, she comes home, she puts on her iPad, and she's clicking through, and here's uh, Apple's sorting all her news. So she's already, one layer in, is already under control. Now, does that mom think she's being controlled? Of course not. No. What she reads is already being given to her by the New York Times or Apple. She's already being brought into a world, and she doesn't even know it. Right. I have friends who all they do is scroll Apple News, okay? They have no idea that there's... Sources like you and other people who can give them a different perspective, nor are they curious. Okay? And so I love it. I get these people, that, my friends, you know, they're in my home, and they start spouting literal talking points from the Clinton. Uh, oh, I've had them. I've had liberal family who aren't liberal. You know, they're more just kind of modern, trendy, or whatever, over, and they see me on my big iPad Pro or whatever. They're like, oh, iPad Pro. And I'm like looking at the New York Times and Apple News and Google News. And they go, you read the New York Times? We thought you were right. Like suddenly I was this intellectual. And I went, I don't try to look at everything. This is all sorted to different psychology types. I also go to Defense One and read what the Pentagon's being told. And they just go, oh, like you go different places. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I literally, I literally can tell my friends when they come at me with those talking points. I'm like, oh, you read HuffPo. Yeah, exactly. Or, or you're a BuzzFeed or you're a Reddit. So, again, taking it back to the street level. Because Show I, them how they're pro. We got to go to break, but go ahead. That's, that's, that's a perfect place to leave it. All right, I get what you're saying. Billy Corgan's thought a lot about how to get people out of their trance. He's talked to millions of fans over the years, hundreds of thousands on the ground. How do you get people that are already caught in a trance out of it? How do you break the trance? I mean, that's the question. Billy Corgan, how do you break the trance of the modern, the modern sorcerers that have enslaved our planet? This is key. Is our guest in studio, SmashingPumpkinsNexus.com. He's playing here uh, in Austin, Texas tonight. And you can also find it on the site where he's going to be playing next. Really a hard schedule out there at packed houses around the country. Briefly, we are listener supported. When you buy a Hillary for President shirt, you're funding our operation. You're promoting the First Amendment uh, for what she did in Benghazi, the rest of it. They've tried to intimidate people that speak out against her. It's important to exercise that free speech. Molon Lambe, come and take it shirts. Uh, we also have uh, our top. Nootropic Brain Force, 45% off retail right now, and that will end tomorrow. I'm extending it one day, InfoWarsLife.com. Hey, can I jump in here? Yeah, sure. I, you don't know this, but I use a lot of your products. I, I literally couldn't tour like I tour without your products. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a free commercial here. It's, the products are fantastic. I didn't know this was going to happen. Well, please tell folks about them because, look, I set out to come up with the least expensive, super high quality stuff. I've got three big top organic firms in the country, you know, the top names, a threshold, you name it. And uh, they go, no, nobody else comes to us with formulas with this much stuff in it. It's all just about hype. We want people to put out stuff like this. And so we really have tried to put out the very best stuff. What's been your experience? Uh, I use X2 iodine every day. Fantastic, keeps me from getting sick on the road. Um, I've used uh, super male vitality. Um, I, I, I use probably about four or five of your products fairly regularly. I mean, I, I can say this from my heart, the highest quality. I'm, I've been sort of on the healthy side of living for about 15 years. It's very hard to find uh, products of this quality on the open market. Well, See, thank you. I'm, I'm, and I, and I, I'm really proud of you because I think that's been one of the best things you've done. Well, thank you. I, I mean, not that I'm Mr. Healthy. I, I got where I didn't care about myself, got depressed about the New World Order, kind of saw myself as expendable, gained almost 100 pounds, was just falling apart. And as I slowly got back into health and stuff, I was trying to find the best, you know, vitamins, minerals. Plus, I had sponsors that were doing it. And you know, it's very difficult on the open market. What's the right vitamin? You know what I'm saying? Well, here's why they do it. With California standards so high that almost nothing's perfectly clean. I mean, there's more lead in the air, as you know, than there is, in, you know, in a, in, a, in a tomato. That it's hard to, so all the time we don't have the product and are sold out because we'll get batches of supposed stuff. It's not, it, it's contaminated. So we have to sit back, return it. Sometimes you get the lawyers back and forth. So that's why we're sold out half the time. So I get why companies don't put out perfect stuff because you basically can't. The planet's so contaminated. But again, I think that this part of your, to use your term, operation, I think is really, really great because you, this is, the, we're sort of in this subject anyway. How do we support people to get themselves 
right mind, mind, body, soul. So they can fight this, 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 you know, we all go through this. We look sometimes like if you're people like you and I, and we can read the bigger sort of zeitgeist stuff um, because we're in it, you know, it's oppressive. <laughs> you know, there are days you wake up and you're just depressed. You just want to go outside and have a good time and play catch with somebody. I agree. You don't want to sit around and think about how somebody's, you know, you know what in you every second of every day. And that's the part is when you get angry, you know what I mean? And I think this is very important. When you get angry sometimes, you know, it's it maybe it's not the most flattering thing to do. But what you are doing is you are helping break that trance. You're saying this is the proper reaction to what is happening to me as an individual, not as a public personality, as an individual, as a father. This is what I'm feeling when I'm looking down the road at what I'm seeing. This exactly. I'm trying to respect people and show how I really feel. So as I'm upset, I'm panicked, it, it, it feels claustrophobic. After I've read a hundred articles where they're just throwing it in our face, I really blow up because it's real. And and and, and let's not forget, there's a lot of mocking behind that, which kind of set, also serves up the social justice warrior stuff. And there's a mocking tone there. If you think somebody's dumb or uneducated or a bigot or something, mocking them is usually not the best way to get through to them. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Well. Specifically, again, Billy Corgan's our guest here. We were really getting to some hardcore issues during the break. We're talking about social justice warriors who I fall down to their level because they're so hateful, they're so dumbed down, but they are victims brought up by this culture. Uh, I'm not, either young people are super awake or they're super dumbed down. The statistics show lower IQs, lower brain activity, near trance state, that's mainstream news. We were talking about that, but still when they're spitting in your face, attacking your reporters, who are really real liberals like Rob Dew and people. And these are real liberals who really love everybody, really care about everybody, really care about free speech, really care about open elections. And there's little arrogant 20 year olds spitting in their faces, screaming at them, you hate me because I'm a tranny. And it's just this made up thing in their head when, when we don't hate them. Uh, what do you, I mean, how do you transcend this? Because I personally just get mad, want to punch them in the nose. Um, well, there's two schools of thought. Um, one is they're gone. You know, they're Maoists. They're, they have the little red book in their hand. You're not going to get them back. It's a cult. It's a cult. And um, the only thing that's going to adjust their ideological uh, fixation is reality. I predict um, that this hashtag generation, because look, for everyone that's out there spinning their little uh, New Year's toy in, in your reporter's face, and I've watched those clips, and I'm horrified. As somebody who believes in free speech and as an, as an artist, because those people are going to be coming for me. Let's face it, it may not be tomorrow, but it's soon enough because I said the wrong thing on the wrong day because I was tired and didn't take my X2 that day or whatever. You know what I mean? It's like to live like that, to live where every, every word is a landmine. You know what I'm saying? It's not the world I want to live in. It's not a liberal world. That's, I grew up a liberal. I grew up a liberal, so it's it's odd to me. The liberals I knew were always like, talk about whatever you want, get it all out in the open, more freedom. Hey, let's go back to, uh, and I'm sure you could find this. Remember, was it around 1978? Okay, Skokie, heavily Jewish community north of, of Chicago. I was there growing up at the time when they when they let the KKK march down the street. And what was the big issue? It was a free speech issue. We don't like it. They're thumbing in our nose, but you know what? It's better to have an America where you know these idiots get to walk down the street and spout their hate. We're better than them. That's what it was. That's the world I grew up in. A liberal, democratically leaning Chicago that was about tolerance and uh, free speech. Not shut it down because it's unpleasant. And again, oh, I, you haven't said this here, so it's not again. The lack of tolerance of ideas and other points of view is the great Achilles heel of the social justice warrior move. They do not apply their philosophical bent across the board equally. That's their... That's, that's what exposes them every time. And you guys are doing a great job of exposing that. But most people, most people who are not down there at the rally and spinning their Twizzler and making up stories about, you know, ghosts that don't exist. And it's a lot of fantasy stuff going on there. I mean, it, 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 it really is like it could be a wizard world. Convention. They just caught basically a gay pastor here in Austin at Whole Foods claiming the gay baker put fag on his cake. And they have like surveillance video now of the cake being delivered. and It's not on there. I mean, now they're even targeting liberal places. Yeah, but that's, a, that's a perfect jumping off point <clears throat> for what I really want to try to get at. Okay, what do most people do? Most people's relationship, like let's take my friend who's a HuffPo reader, okay? He, is a, he, in his heart, is a classic liberal. He cares about everybody. He loves music from every race, creed, and color. Not a racist in his heart, okay? Uh, he reads that stuff. And he thinks by participating, by hashtagging, he's on the good team. 
right? So the people you got to get through to is, is, is the people who I have, don't have the little red book yet, who do care about humanity and do care about free speech. And you have to get them to understand how their participation in those They're systems, being inducted into a cult. Absolutely. And, and nobody wants to admit that they're being fooled. Now, I work in professional wrestling, TNA Impact Wrestling, on Tuesday nights on Pop Network. There's my commercial. I've seen it. This is great. <laughs> Thank you. So, <clears throat> you know, what's the old Carney term? They're marks. What was the Carney idea? We're going to stage a fight. You know, it started in the carnivals in the 1900s. We're going to stage a fight. We're going to get the local yokels to believe that the kid from the sticks is going to fight the big guy. And if he can beat him, you know, and that's how, that's how professional wrestling started. Believing that what you were witnessing was real. And you suspend disbelief. Yes. Well, that's what we have. We have a world of suspended disbelief, right? I want to play a short clip we can talk over of just a few social justice warriors. And what's amazing is people will talk to him and go, listen, I don't even support Trump, but I support free and open elections. What about Bernie Sanders? And they just spit in our reporter's face and spit on somebody else just because they just want to hate somebody. And they literally are like a dumb Klan guy that just pulls over on some black guy walking home from work and kills them because they're black. They want to just project something Listen, onto you. Let's, let's, let's flip the script here for a second, okay? And this is a very, I'm going to try to say this in a sort of hypothetical Star Wars holodeck type of way, okay? If we could transport back to, you know, a much, much more, much, much more racist. I'm not saying America doesn't have a racist bent. But so let's 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 put that out there to start with. But let's go back to a time where racism was accepted. It was institutionalized. Okay. If you could go back to Selma, 1932, and the Klan member is spitting in some person of color's face, don't you think that guy thought he was right too? Yes. Okay. So how is this any different? It's not. And then you realize America has problems, but the media doesn't teach. Every other country had stuff. Worse, usually. But, but to look to the media to educate us, is a, it, we're stuck on Cronkite. And even he was part of the, the deal. You know I'm saying? We, we have to understand, <clears throat> we have to be our own judge and jury here. Well, George Washington wasn't allowed in most of the private clubs or businesses where you had to be given entree to even operate as a landowner. So he was going under something lesser than, quote, black slaves. The point was is that it was his will to, to be on an equal playing field that helped lead that revolution. So, so it, it's just all these forms of class and control, whereas it should be about free, open human dialogue and free association. Look, I work in a very <clears throat> rapacious and uh, cruel business. You know, I'm 49 years old and I'm, you know, I'm 30 plus years in the game. I mean, I'm on the 0.001% of the survivor list. Okay. It's a brutal business. It's a brutal business. And I'm not asking for... And by the way, you look the best I've ever seen for a rock star in this 30 years. God bless you. My God. That you're you're a handsome man. No, 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 no. You're healthy, man. It's true. Thank you. So what I'm trying to say is I personally, even though I don't like it, I personally don't mind a capitalist society that leverages its power based on opportunity. Because I believe in, in, in any uh, sociopolitical... Uh, capitalist system that existed, America has provided more freedom for more people for the longest period of time. So are there losers in that game? Yes. And at some point, even I'm a loser in that game. But I believe in that system more than a system that would be gamed for me. I would sell more records. I would have more opportunities if I would turn into one of sure, those. Sure, sure. I was offered trendies. first um, two million a year, like 18 years ago, and then five million and then even more. I mean, we're talking over $10 million a year contract to have shows bigger than Glenn Beck's, Limbaugh. Right. I mean, I've been offered it all by the, by the big syndicators. So, so what are we, and the point is that that wasn't winning to me to have the biggest house in a private jet. Winning is to see 9-11 truth that I exposed now all over the newspapers 15 years later to expose the tyrants that did this. I mean, I really think about myself with everybody else. I really have empathy. And it's not because I'm some loving goody tissues. That's a normal human instinct. Of someone that wants to live right. on so a good planet. I do most people, like we all have extended friends and family, and we would probably classify most of those people as good hearted. Or we probably wouldn't have them in our lives. And I think that probably goes for anybody listening to us. Right? Yes. Okay. So what it, what is happening that is allowing those people to be led down a path? Goebbels said we give them dumbed down propaganda that just gives them an excuse to be confused and lay down and do nothing. Okay. So... If you're if if you're trying to come at it from a different angle, because we see the rise of the social justice worry movement as another propaganda kind of a control arm, right? It's here to control us. It's the Maoists. Here they come, and they'll use kids, and they'll use, I mean they have no shame. It's classic tyranny. Okay, right. 
So what is allowing people who in their own hearts have a differing opinion to be led down this path? It's a collectivism. It's a it's a peer pressure. It's shaming. It's it's guilting. It's it's like gang member stuff. They're they're young. They're uninformed. They take them to the college. They put them under pressure. They send them to but, group. But again, that stuff can exist against a majority who deep down doesn't really truly in their hearts believe. So liberty lovers have to reach out to young people. They have to get involved in the community. They have to go be part of the student groups, whether it's Boy Scouts or whatever it is. We have to reach out. We have to go to the colleges. We have to volunteer. We all have to go and reach into these groups and break the centralized control that's coming in. Is that what you're saying? And stop clicking the pop culture? I think I think there's stuff to be said there, but I think for most people, that's probably more effort than they can make because you know it's, a, it's not a great economy and stuff like this. I think you have to look that, look, again, back to the InfoWar thing. Whether you realized it or not, you saw something coming long before other people that the, the, the ultimate sort of collapse here was predicated on a psychological control. Yeah. The things you're still talking about are very real. Most people are in their community. Most people feel they are participants in their community on some level. Even if they're paying taxes, they're a participant. Sure. They don't like when the water bill goes up. We're all part of that. I'm talking about a, a, a more collectivist concept where you, know, you have this merging of technology, um, the new robber barons, you know what I mean? And I know some of them personally, I hang out with them, you know, so they're not, they're not, not real to me. Sure. And they go along with the bigger robber barons because the minute they get out of line, they get crushed. Right. Okay. People don't know the ultra rich are the most controlled. So let's, the let's, most cloistered. let's break it down Yeah. so that anybody uh, walking down the street listening can understand what we're saying. At the highest levels of power, should we blame power for being powerful? Or should we blame the powerful being powerful? Most people are not powerful. So when you talk to them about these things, even though they can relate, and maybe they even have a personal reaction, there's not much they can do because it's the Borg, you know, to use the Star Trek word. It's the Borg. So if you don't realize you're supporting the Borg, yet you feel oppressed by the Borg, the next natural question is, well, how do I not support the Borg? So that's, that's it. How I, do we begin? None of us are perfect to pull out of the system. Yes. Plant a gar you. garden. Go to the local no, no, swap no. meet. Sorry, I don't. I, no, that's important, and I don't mean to diminish what you're saying. No, no, go ahead. We're talking about the technocratic part of this equation. So how do we engage there? Okay, pick your favorite company. Doesn't matter. I'm in these systems, right? So I have to dance carefully around these subjects. Okay, pick your favorite system and follow the money. Follow the money. Understand how your Lack of curiosity or lack of knowledge about who you're- So you're in, in the biggest defense contractor. How did you get into that? <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> no, I mean, a long time ago, it just boom, suddenly, yeah. Right. You have to look at the systems that you engage in. Pick your system. Is it a social media system? And by the way, they'll attack you for that, but you just volunteered that. I'll tell you something I've talked about publicly, so there's no new information here, but it illustrates the point. I quit Twitter about six months ago. I had about 300,000 I remember, yeah. Okay. Twitter called me within the week. Why did you quit Twitter? I said, because you guys treat my participation the same as the guy who sits all day and hashtags F you this and F you that and F, you know what I'm saying? My vote and my participation in your system is worth more to you than some jerk who just tweets negative stuff all day. And you know that. And the guy said, yes, we do, which is why we're calling you. And I said, so you're basically using my credibility, my my social status, my celebrity, my power, whatever, however you want to quantify it, you're using it to build up your IPO, right? Aren't you? Okay, so my- So how do we, the people that bring real skin to the game, demand from the technocracy that we're part of, whether hurt, we like it or not, to, how do we demand- you have, to hurt, you have to hurt them where it hurts. It's a numbers game. I want to come back then and talk about that because you're absolutely right. We can't just sit here and bitch at the system- That's what when, I'm saying. When we're all part of it. We are part of it. Well, I agree, that's key, but I believe an even bigger key is what you first wanted to get into, and you have. How do you get the general person, you've talked a lot about it, to realize they're being manipulated, they're in a lower brainwave level near sleep. That's mainstream news. All right, for 15, 20 minutes the next hour, Leanne McAdee will be in studio with us for Billy Corgan. I'm Alex Jones, your host. Please remember, InfoWarsStore.com, voting with your dollars, voting with your feet, your actions, getting great products, funds the operation. We got that big special, 45% off on BrainForce, great nootropic. Uh, that will end tomorrow, InfoWarsLife.com. Billy, we got Leanne coming in. We'll get more into social justice warriors, uh, you know, this big time of change, things we're moving into. Clearly, the future battle space, as they call it, the Pentagon, is being shaped right now 
a critical time. So many people that have served the establishment are realizing now they were set up. They were being set up to be obsolete. A technocracy's coming in, the robot takeover. This is the elite's own admissions. But if we're there putting out the narrative that humans have a choice and a destiny and that folks can break out of their trance, make decisions with their actions, that can really change the future of this. And the Pentagon even admits in their own reports, like their Jade Helm report about mastering the human domain, stopping empowered individuals and new ideas, their own admission reads like an indictment. And of course, the military themselves are great people. It's so crazy, you know, the most awake people are in the military, but then the Pentagon's own battle plan is like a treasonous letter against humanity. Let's start here. Nature abhors a vacuum. Okay. So pick your system, military, social control, uh, the educational systems of control. Okay. They're stepping to, into a space that's been created by the average American's abdication of their civic and social responsibility to help run a society which is um, has a reasonable level of control. You know what I'm saying? Like I used to sit on steps when I was 18 years old with the kids with the, the, the spike chair and they talk about anarchy. And I'd say that's great, but like, are you not gonna have a toilet? You know, so if we if we accept that the, the average American vision is you know, clean living and, and social systems and government. And that social contract's being broken. Yes, but it, but but it's it's being it's being broken. You, now you you've made fantastic arguments for for why it's being broken, but it, it it can only happen because the average American is letting it happen. We don't stand up for ourselves. Well, well, let's, let's just say it. Some people are gone. We don't revel in that fact, like the establishment. But some of these people are dangerous zombies. So what do you do at the well, point? Been, to use your term and, and other people, I guess, on your show, they've been weaponized. Okay, so let's just be like, we keep it real simple. Um, let's say 20% of the people are awake. Let's say 20%. About right. So let's say 20% of the people are weaponized. Okay, so the fight is over the other 60%. Who thinks because they hashtag about somebody else across or the Or thinks because they live in a nice house, they're immune from it. No, yeah, you're not. The future of humanity is being decided. Right. Exactly. So. Because so, more are getting weaponized, folks. More are waking up, but more are weaponizing. Okay, There's so, a race. So you have a, you have a series of choices. First, you'd have to identify the systems that you engage in and whether those systems are um, zero-sum games, whether they're positive or negative for you and your family. So take any, uh, take any uh, social media system, uh, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram. Is your participation in those systems actually making your life worse on some level? Now, most people would laugh at that. What does that mean? Just because I retweet a couple pictures or whatever, I mean, is that, is that well, if you're supporting things that are ultimately hurting your community, then that argument can and be And if made. you're making your life useless crap on these, pla I only use Twitter and Facebook to attack them and to expose what they're doing. And still I feel guilty. Drudge says, hey, you shouldn't even do that. Only do your own thing. And more and more, I think he's right. Because they already have algorithms cheating us and stopping us from getting stuff Absolutely. out. Absolutely. I mean, uh, Twitter has been caught um, suppressing and, and deleting things. Well, oh, they do it all the time. And stopping. So you think Drudge is right? I should just totally disengage? There is certainly a movement in the technological community that's all going to be what they call over the top network. In essence, you, you would rather have... You would rather have 300,000 people coming to Alex Jones every day than you having to work with other systems and, and, and de facto supporting those systems. Now, those arguments can go either way, and I, I, couldn't, I couldn't advise you one way as a friend what is better. I'm involved in those systems as well. So what I would argue for is let's call it a, consci a conscientious participation. If you are, if you are a... Wow, that's a good... Oh, stay there. We'll come back in 70 seconds. Conscientious. Wow, that's, that's powerful. Stay with us. Billy Thank Corgan's our guest. Oh, his Facebook. We put his Facebook up on screen. We're using the enemy system. What's your Facebook again? Is huge? No idea. Oh, yeah, it's big. We'll put it up.